top five worst diseases of all time. Let's get into it. At number five, we got Alzheimer's. At number four, we got Alzheimer's. Number five, we got Alzheimer's. 48 minutes of dogs barking. 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 Growl. Growl. 48 minutes of dogs barking. 48 minutes <laughs> the day before thanksgiving i had a doctor's appointment and they uh they put me on the scale like a fat little pig and i realized like oh cool with all the sickness and shit that i've been dealing with this year uh i gained back all the weight i lost no, uh, in 22 no. and i'm like okay i'm back to fucking porker city sick sick cool and then i you know then i spend the next day just having food shoved at me for 12 hours straight like cool <laughs> yeah. cool you know, excellent holiday, excellent yeah. so like i was like okay i get get my shit together i'm like you know what i like i know how my little fucking idiot brain works and i was like i'm gonna get like a subscription food subscription thing box i'm gonna do for a minute um and it's like pre-made i did it once before last a uh, couple summers ago and i was really busy mm -hmm. like they're like 600 calories you know, I go to high protein ones because the hope high protein is going to make you feel more full. Mm -hmm. Like I got this all thought out. I, mean, I was going to do this for like nine weeks or something and get myself back on track. And the box showed up. The first box showed up today. I was fucking stoked. I'm like, this is it. I'm getting my back myself back on yeah, track. Yeah. You're ready. I'm on meds that kind of uh, that help me with my anxiety and my ADD. And those kind of dissipate my appetite a little bit. So I was like, okay, I just got to make sure I'm eating good nutritional stuff. I'm going to be eating less. But like, okay, I'm in there. I'm in the mind. I'm in the zone. Yeah. I'm in the fucking zone. I crack open that fucking factor box, move the first fucking like frozen little block thing. And there's just like a fucking lint's like 70 percent cacao like chocolate bar and i'm like no cool cool <laughs> so i'm like i'm like i'm in fat fuck mode so i'm like you know what okay i'm hungry Damn. i just came home from work gonna throw yeah, one in the fucking fridge eat half that candy bar yeah there we go i'm on it. i'm on the fucking path mm -hmm. man under 200s coming quicker than you think <laughs> this is 48 minutes of dogs barking i am brian my Hello. cohort here is jason and that, that little man that you were hearing talking a little bit <laughs> over my bullshit is the, the singular auteur. The one and only. Striker Spurlock. Well, I'm part of a directing duo. A direct a, a duo now? This is a new development. It's me and Amy now. Oh, I didn't know that. That is awesome. Amy's also very, very talented. What we got going so on I'm, here? I'm... All right. So, yep. stri so Striker. Stri 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 striker, you're part of a... Uh, of uh, the directing duo yes spurton millick is what we call ourselves <laughs> amazing after our last name spurlock and milton we're like what's the Spurton. most yeah. what's the most disgusting combination of our last names <laughs> like, that, spurton millick spurton. it sounds like it sounds like something that happens like in a massage parlor yeah no absolutely <laughs> yeah it doesn't sound good but also, like but not like not like a sexy massage parlor like a one where everyone's really upset yes what what gets me is the millick because it sounds like hillock, oh, like a little God, hill, yeah. but it's like it's not that. It's but so it's like it, maybe it's like a you little, can't picture what it might be. Maybe it's like a little mill. Yeah, it's a tiny it's mill. A tiny a mill. Tiny mill. Yeah. Full of ejaculate. <laughs> the cum mill. <laughs> the nut mill. That's kind of what we're going for. Well, straight out of the nut mill, tonight's special guest is, of course, comedian, writer, actor, filmmaker, editor, general roustabout responsible for the conceptual sketch comedy slash talk show slash fever dream fatal bus accident and. 2021 film part time described by letterbox user zach as quote the best exploration of middle classness i've ever seen on film it's striker spurlock hey <laughs> i know yeah, that right. guy zach i've never met him but i know him he's from oh that's funny he, I, we we bonded on the website letterbox because he's from like 15 minutes from where i was raised oh wow, oh, wow. in kentucky like he's he lives in the middle of nowhere and works in a factory but he likes art movies oh that's fucking rules i yeah. love that yeah those guys are my favorite guys yeah, yeah. those are cool guys yeah, shout out to zach yeah shout out to zach yeah your uh your film part time is uh one of my favorite bits of indie cinema I've seen in the last couple of years. Thank I, you. uh, it just kind of fucked with me so much that you, how perfectly you encapsulate 
just how boring it was growing up in North County. Yeah. And I'm not even from here. Yeah. And like, but which like, is really what makes it. Yeah. It sells it. Did you, did <laughs> yeah. you see it, Jason? Yeah. 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 Okay, I cool. Bought it on Vimeo. Oh, thank uh, you. You're, 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 one of the, you're one of the 10 people to buy yeah, it on Vimeo. Yeah, uh, buy yeah. the movie. Yes. Yeah, please, sure. please buy the movie. I have to pay a subscription to have that Vimeo account. Oh, yeah. So I am losing money by <laughs> every hosting time you it. Don't, every time you don't buy part-time there's no good way to make a film like this no <laughs> yeah is what i've learned quickly the finances aside though is is a great piece of indie cinema Thank and you. uh you know i need to buy it i need to rewatch it it's been a couple years but i was just kind of like holy i didn't know you had it in you i just the the performances from everyone um conceptually just an incredibly strong first time go thank you I can't wait to see uh, the next film you guys are working on. Yeah, yeah, do you have a title? The Strange Air. The Strange Air. A-I-R. Okay, all yeah. right. This is, uh, do you want to know why it's called that? Sure. Yes, please. Because when I thought of the idea for the movie, like four years ago, uh, I was coming home from seeing my grandpa in Kentucky with my family, and we were listening to The Stranger by Billy Joel. And I was like, "What if it's a Billy Joel musical?" And that didn't that didn't happen. But I, was like, <laughs> but, I but I'm like, I'm going to name it subtly after the stranger. I'm going to okay. call it the Strange Air. Would, okay. Would a Billy Joel musical be about drunk driving? Yeah. <laughs> there <laughs> there was one. They did one called Moving Out. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It was a jukebox musical, is what they call those. Like Mamma Mia was. Yeah, right. It was, it or was like we, uh, we will we will rock you. Yeah. The Queen one. I yeah. never saw any of that. I was a big Billy Joel fan as a kid. I but still I am. Never, yeah. I still like him a lot. Oh, I still yeah. do too. Yeah. I, just I as the, a kid, I was obsessed. Oh, for sure. I got to see him live with Elton John. Me once too. In Ooh, high school. I missed mm-hmm. that. One. That was I, it. Was cool. It was, it was. I mean, I got to see Billy Joel and Elton John. My mom had two tickets, and every one of her friends like dropped out, had shit going oh, on, or whatever. And ooh. my mom was like, "Well, you, uh, this is a really expensive ticket, so you really don't have a choice here." And I'm like, <laughs> "All right." <laughs> It was a great show. It was a great show. It was, yeah. it was super fun. I mean, it's not my kind of thing, but as far as like, you know, minute per minute value of entertainment, like oh, it was for sure. top tier mm-hmm. uh, fucking music. Was that like 2008? This was like 2003 or 2004. Well, they oh, did okay. a bunch of those tours. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they I was did. Uh, I went to the 2008 one at the Utah Jazz Arena in Salt Lake City. Oh, wow. Oh, hell yeah. It was a great show. That's an amazing arena, too. Good, good venue to see a show. Have you been there? Uh, I have not, but I've seen photos, and I know that like people who go there are just like wow. Yeah, by the whole it was cool. I mean, you know, yet. I was like eleven, so I didn't really. I don't. Know well, if sure, I appreciated yeah, you can't that appreciate that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think it was my probably my first concert actually. Wow, um, uh, my first concert was uh, God Paula Abdul. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, and color me bad opens bad with two D's, of course. Right, right. I've got the worst one. Oh, Family Values Tour uh, ninety nine. I don't oh know. I think God. that was pretty so that good was, lineup. That was uh, Limp Bizkit was the headliner, of course. Yeah. Corn, Crystal Method, Filter, and I can't remember who else. None of those have seemed bad so far. I don't know. Maybe Limp Bizkit. Well, it so, just seems very of its time. Limp Bizkit, yeah. actually, you know what? It's really easy, and you should talk shit on Limp Bizkit, but they do. I, they never put on a bad I've never heard anyone be like, yeah, I, they put on a bad show. Never heard anyone say, right. no matter how much they dislike the band, being like, Oh, that was a waste of time. And you're just like, yeah, that was entertaining. But, yeah. uh, right. It's like the, the thing. The yeah. thing that was, I guess, demystifying about seeing Corn live because I was really in the Corn. I really liked Follow the Lear. I did not like the uh, follow up record issues. Mm. Uh, I think that is a fucking hot, steamy sack of shit. Um, and that was like right before issues came out. And I just remember like uh, Jonathan Davis like thrashing around, you know, doing his yeah. uh, his uh, his. His gothic Scatman Crothers <laughs> vibes or whatever, and uh, and I guess when he was like thrashing about during like you know like the chorus of like or something, one of his socks, I guess slouched on his ankle, and as he comes back to the microphone, the the go back in the scene, a roadie comes out there like he is saving a child from a falling building to pull his sock back up. And I'm like, I'm like 12 thinking like, I'm thinking like, oh, this is really just ruined. Yeah. Like, I can't ever take this seriously. <laughs> this is just totally I, yeah. fucked it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> the dude from Filter yeah. got pelted with a full soda oh, during Jesus. a song. And I mean, like, you uh, want to talk about like a direct hit. Like, this was yeah. like, whoever threw that. 
Yeah. They should have gone to play college ball. Like a, like a <laughs> cup with a straw, not like, like a, a cup bottle. with a straw. And oh, I mean, it was like boy. it was like also during one of those because you know, filter is very much like spa music, but like it's a cool spa or like going like to a cool dentist office kind of music. <laughs> okay. So like lots of like elongated like you want to take my picture, oh, you know, like yeah, really stretching that, out those that, vowels. Yeah. And it was really one of those moments where he was like getting like the the fucking shoulders like and stretching out like the last syllable of some word, and someone just fucking pouts him. Mm. Like oh, and like got him hard. I mean, like knocked him back. And I guess like you know that's an asshole thing. But like it was kind of funny because filter. Funny. It was filter. <laughs> I like I saw people. Filter. I saw people throw uh, chicken wings at Crazy Town at Ozfest, and that was pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> people throwing chicken wings at Crazy Town. Well, speaking of Crazy Town, this TikTok has driven me nuts the past couple of days. I know it's satire, but it, it really feels it feels weird. I mean, oh, it's one of those. Yeah. It's like, even if this is funny and you know it's stupid, you're still putting evil in the world. Like that yeah, kind of, thing? kind of, because it's one of those things where they're kind of making fun of prompts. Okay. You know, these, tell me a story about yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. What but, was your first concert? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one is. Okay, guys. I think I have a new one. Tell me about a time that you or somebody you know... Like, you know this story personally. Tell me about a time that you or somebody you know, either separately or together, or neither of you, were actually involved or not. Like, think, and it could be an instance, too. So, think, tell me about a time, time or an instance or even a place that you and this person that you know, you know this person, so this isn't a random person. Tell me about a time or, or a place or an instance that you or this person, either separately or together, could be either one, maybe none of you, honestly, were involved in this or, or not involved. Like, but tell me about a time that you or this other person or none of you or all of you and, or an instance or a place or a thing could be a thing, too. Tell me about a time that you... <laughs> And then it just cuts out. <laughs> it's like one of those. Like she kept the ball in the air for a while. Oh yeah. Jeez. Um, and someone re- said it reminded them of the the kid going. Have you ever did? Yeah, did you yeah. Ever, yeah the, the, that you could be anything. And it, yeah. Oh, from uh, Kids in the Hall. Yeah. One yeah. time I saw a lion, <laughs> and, and, and at the zoo or at the circus. Yeah, and the, or the, I had the titular line Star Wars. Yeah, characters. those kind of right. guys. Yeah, those kind of people. Well, and then like these. This is of course the, the <laughs> subreddit cringe TikToks. So I was trolling that for a little bit earlier today, and this just That's for painful. some reason it stood out uh, just because it's like it's it's what, kind of taking the piss on what, prompt. What bothers me is that the the title of the Reddit post was "Why would she ask this?" because. People on Reddit do not understand no, what jokes are. They don't. They don't. They There's a no whole idea. subreddit called Explain the Joke. And it's like, you don't understand what jokes are. No, you really don't. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But then you also just have to think like, oh, People on Reddit are all fourteen years old. Well, there's you know, that that's too. Part yeah. of the problem, <laughs> and the the autism levels oh, must be. You know, I, I think about I think about that tweet that's like, uh, you know, autistic guys must hate blues music because it's not perfectly played, and it's about dudes being sad at a train station. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> like. Oh, they should be excited to be at a train station. I get it. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. There we go. Took me there a, he is. Took folks. me a I, I, I got there eventually. There's, but, there's yeah. a different type of guy who I guess you could possibly call autistic. I don't know. But I know guys like that who love certain types of blues music like Stevie Ray Vaughan or yeah. something oh, because sure. of the uh, technical virtuosity oh, yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those guys are usually side. called doctors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doctors, dentists, lawyers, yeah. any kind yeah. of psychopath job. <laughs> They love a well played guitar. Yeah, the button down uh, psychos. Yeah. When uh, when I worked at Guitar Center, we had this PRS Paul Reed Smith. Folks don't know Paul Reed Smith are probably the most technically perfect guitars you can buy, but they're also probably the most boring. Mm-hmm. And we had this one that was like you know quadruple A maple quilt top. You know the uh, rose uh, Brazilian rosewood neck and fretboard. All the uh, oh, so sure. fancy. So like and it was like six thousand dollars, which was at the time a very expensive amount for just like our standard PRS guitar. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone sold it, one of the guys on the guitar floor. And I asked him like, "Oh, what kind of doctor was he? Was he like a <laughs> pulmonary specialist?" Or and like no one got the joke. Yeah. Oh. Well, he's a gynecologist, probably. Uh, yeah. 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 Burn, 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 burn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, yeah, that's. 
So, Striker, are you familiar with Plum Corp Records? Are you familiar with these Oh, guys? I listened. Uh, did you show this guy to Chris Ward? I did. I listened yes. to that episode. That was, I think, my first exposure to Plum Corp. So that was Big Swimmer. That, that was Michael Phelps' fit check. Okay. And they've done a couple of videos since uh, of varying quality. There was one we talked about a couple weeks ago where it was like a guy staring at you for an hour. Right. They branched out. They they really came to, to prominence with uh, Dracula Flow, which was this guy in a really goofy, like they drew on the widow's peak and they had him all decked out. And he's talking about how the perks hitting and all that. Right. Well, this is a guy they found. <laughs> and the title of the video was just Walter White on a perk. And so what I so I don't understand what this what is this project? They just find old guys and exploit them? Is that what the deal it's, is? It's kind of like Tim Narek, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, it's kind of how it feels like I I know there is at least a clothing label associated with it. So like they'll oh, have okay. links to buy the shirts that have Big Swimmer on it or they'll have, you know, so yeah, there's yeah. a there's at least a business attached to it in some yeah, degree. Right. I don't know specifically what they're trying to do. Aside from just make people laugh, which it works for me because every time there's the guy uh, you can see on the, uh, the the recommended for you there, Bat Talk. It's a guy in a Batman costume screaming about being on Percocets. Well, <laughs> so, so here's a theme. Yeah. So, so here's one. It's Walter White on a perk, and <laughs> it's just this guy who vaguely looks like uh, Brian Cranston, not even close. The good perk, Jesse. I'm busting off the pill. Oh, this perk has me reaching for the luger. Oh, the good perk. The good perk. <laughs> Do you think they pay these guys in pills? You would have to. It'd be cool so, if there was just a family sleeping in that RV. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's true. They, they, they did film it outside of an RV. Somebody's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope that wasn't somebody's actual RV, because God damn. Like, just somebody yelling about, Perk got me fucked up! Also, I realized I, I'm. this is the part of the podcast I'm bad at, because I'm not a big reactor. Like I don't, okay. I don't really laugh at stuff a lot, but I no, just kind of smile. So okay. people yeah, have funny. to watch the video element to oh, know that absolutely. I'm not just yeah, pissed I'll, off. I'll drop, I'll drop clips in because, yeah, there's, there's, there's certain stuff where you just you can't get the, you can't get the vibe until you hear it. The, hearing like Bat Talk or hearing Drack of the Flow or this one, it's like your vocabulary is changed. Yeah. That's what fucked me up. That when rhino I f- pill is creamy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'll be stuck in your head. Yeah, or like, yes, I was throwing diamonds in the strip club beneath the pyramids. Yeah. yeah. I'll start saying shit like, you know, you reach for the bands and I turned him into an example and nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. They're like, dude, you're 48 years old. <laughs> or however old you may actually be. I don't want to slander you. It's fine. It's 42, but that's fine. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll somehow recover. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought 40, 48 was a funnier rhythm. It is. It is. It's, you know what? I'll, everybody loves Susan Sarandon, right? Of course. Okay. Well, are you guys familiar with, with Miles, her oh, son? No. Is no. this like a Richard Dreyfus's son situation? Thankfully, no. Okay. Thank, thankfully, it, it's not Ben Dreyfus getting... I don't know. Just being like, just, just nuke Palestine or whatever, <laughs> whatever the hell he was saying. Just do it. Who cares? Do it. My Listen. dad was in Jaws. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's not that bad. But but yeah, Miles is Ben, uh, is ben Dreyfus off the perk. Oh, oh he's he has got to be. He's, he's got to be, gotta be like. No... Uh, oh God, what's it? Max Landis. Oh, you know that guy's okay. got to be yeah, swagging sure. off the perk. All, all these like sons of like Hollywood guys are all <laughs> oh, yeah. pilled well, up. There was that son of uh, the Hollywood agent that like murdered and dismembered like his fiance's body Jesus or something Christ. like that. Yeah, yeah. God yeah. God yeah. Damn. Oh, Just boy. because they wouldn't make a Tropic Thunder 2? <laughs> Is that... <laughs> Downey Jr. was robbed of the Oscar by Heath Ledger. He's got to come back and get the gold this time. <laughs> Jack Black. You want to know? I got these scars. <laughs> yeah, they got to have him as Black Joker in Tropic Black- Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> this, this perk got me feeling like Black Joker. Black- <laughs> you want to know how I got these bands? <laughs> All right. So what's what's Susan Sarandon's progeny doing? Susan Sarandon's progeny is posting on Twitter. I'm not calling it X. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. Okay, I'm really grateful to see people on Twitter defending my mom amidst a new era of McCarthyist blacklisting. This was, of course, Uh after Susan Sarandon said something positive in relation to Palestine. Right, because she's cool. But can you please, all caps, stop using the clip of her getting her hair done with her honkers out? (laughs) So, 
I, I don't know this clip. I, I, one of those things where I'm like, okay, okay I'm interested. What is right. this clip? Of it's the Streisand effect. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, it is. It's it's just a it's a clip. She's getting ready. They're they're doing makeup in a trailer for something that she's in, but she's in a bra. Okay. And it's just they're they're doing her makeup and and somebody says something about how old she is and she goes, "Yeah, I'm 72." And the the woman who's doing her hair kind of goes, "What?" But she's got, I mean, she has her honkers out. That's what right. I mean, well, he's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going I'm going to need you to back up this claim. Oh, okay, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> sh- it's surely in the replies to oh, this yeah, tweet. It has to be, it unless he, unless uh, unless he's they, got it hidden or something. Yeah, like that. maybe. Let's see, Miles. It... I'm seeing a blue check right winger replying with "Your mom is the McCarthy blacklister." Yeah. Those there guys there are so smart. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Wait, it, w- wasn't she in the four year old virgin? Or am I thinking of someone else? That was Jane Lynch. As okay, as I know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she does look great. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, you know what? Like <laughs> being b- being very wealthy can uh, do that for well, you. Well, that's yeah. true too. Yeah, and also, you but know, also, you know, there's genetics involved. Being right, because I mean, look at fucking um, Bridget Bardo or somebody. Like there, there's yeah. people who with money who just age like shit. That's who true. used to be like very beautiful. And so Miles, just like co- me. <laughs> <laughs> that's you yeah. Know what? Yeah. Uh, and so Miles, a couple days later, he posted this. They thought that putting honker pics in the headline would hurt me, but I am unbreakable. I've had my whole life to prepare for this day. I have trained in freezing temperatures atop the world's tallest mountains. Asterisk. Watched Rocky Horror Picture Show and The Hunger. And there is nothing you can do to defeat me. <laughs> Man. What a burden it is to have a smoking hot mom. I know. It's a terrible, terrible thing. What yeah. a terrible fate. Like, it just endures. Like, it's not like she was hot. It's just still today. Just right. ongoing problem for Continuously. him. Continuously. Because w- when he said video with her honkers out, I was like, oh, okay, from like the 80s or something. Like, no, no. Recently. Recent. Recent. Yeah. Brian? yeah. <laughs> In the past 10 years or so. Yeah, that's fucking. Well, I was going to say, like, I think the only thing worse than having a hot mom is being uh, kidnapped by Hamas. Oh, I don't know if I agree. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to move on. Uh, (laughs) Speaking of new movies that are coming out, though. Lady Ballers. Lady Ballers. Stryker, you know about this? Oh, I know of it, and I can kind of guess what it is. It is literally the movie Joanna Man, but with a bunch of white people. (laughs) And like the only scene I think in the trailer with a black person is like, don't steal my catalytic converter. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very very, cool. Yeah. Not not great. (laughs) But End Wokeness posted, this is what we have all been craving for so long. Actual comedy. Lady Ballers is going to be one of the top blockbusters of the year. Mark my words. And I saw the two minute trailer and I had. But it's only on Daily Wire Plus. How could it possibly be one of the top blockbusters of the year? Yeah, exactly right. It's just on a website. That's right. (laughs) And the, oh boy, the cameos. Boy, they got Ted Cruz to come in for a cameo. Oh, wow. And Ben Shapiro. Oh, boy. Boy. Uh, (laughs) The shocked look on Striker's face. I was just, I was like, well, Daily Wire is his. Yeah, that's his, yeah. Okay, so, okay, okay. Yeah, they didn't have to pay him or anything. Wow. He just no, showed I up believe, free. I can't believe this. I, I, can't, believe this, I can't believe we got the boss. I can't this man's, uh, is this a man or a woman? I can't believe what's going on here. <laughs> uh, is he playing basketball? Or he's there's playing nothing, basketball? There's nothing in the rule here, book folks. that says that. I thought this was America. It. Yeah, I was going to say, this is just, it, I, when I was trying to guess what this was, I was like, Air Bud, but somehow with trans <laughs> women. Nothing, like, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. There's nothing in the rules. Then. Interesting. Say a guy can't play basketball as a woman. Are we going to watch the trailer? Oh, uh, this is a screenshot because I don't want to give End Wokeness any money. But yeah, you're right. We should probably look at the Lady Ballers trailer. Yeah, it's yeah. oh man, it's 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 rough. bad. I mean, it's, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that. Like, yeah. No, there's 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 really nothing redeeming in it. But we should probably, for the sake of oh, journalistic long. integrity, it's so long in a world. By the way, they do in a world. Don LaFontaine's dead. Right. So. Oh my God. Wow. Are there at least squibs? I don't That's like the only no. thing I've heard people Oh, the say. most triggering comedy of the year, Striker. They can't use the Olympics, so they have to say, uh, you know, global games. Yeah. There you go. There's not Steve Carell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the great value Steve Carell. <laughs> yes. It's the one joke stretched out over 90 minutes. Something about 
they, they she tasered that guy. Something about the taser just feels very like twenty years ago. I don't know. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? early two thousands. Yeah. yeah, that little girl's gonna grow up to regret this so oh, bad. Oh, absolutely. She's gonna be it's gonna like, follow her. She's gonna hate her parents. So, of the people in this movie, how many don't they know how little money WNBA players make? No. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't. That's not... the other thing. The other the other right wing joke is that nobody gives a shit about the WNBA. Right. Yeah. They... Well, that that actually makes an appearance at the end of the trailer. So once you oh okay, oh, from heroes God. to sheroes. By the way, they're even doing like the 2007 font. Oh yeah. So they come out. It's ladies uh-huh, basketball uh-huh. boys. Nobody watches. Uh huh. So what does it matter? Yeah. Exactly. There's Ted Cruz. There's your Ted Cruz cameo. Oh, and of course we got to make a reference to tucking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's the same joke. <laughs> the same that joke. women are weak and that men will destroy them no matter the yeah the deception. Not only that, but like I identify as 12 years old, so I can play a uh, uh, PB basketball. I wonder if that movie is a like struggle to the finish line. 80 minutes or if it's Oof. like just a bloated like hour 50 you know what i mean it could go one of two no i feel like it's gonna be a real trim 80 because there's not that's a lot of meat be. on that's that what bone. i was leaning to yeah there's not a lot of meat there i it feels like they do one joke over 80 something minutes that's kind of what i was you leaning. know what we, we're here talking shit yeah but watch this comes out and there's an amazing chris chan cameo <laughs> <laughs> They get a CGI Sonic Chew to dunk. <laughs> you know what? Wow, I can't believe all these 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 men folk are lady basketball players. This is real. Oh, Julie, I don't get it. Julie, the pickle man tricked me again. Here we are at the basketball game. Like what? Real quick, before I move on from this, I got it. Yeah. Uh, of the people in that movie, yeah. How many do you think are frothing right wing ideologue guys, and how many do you think are just vacuous fucking idiot actors? About fifty fifty that they're just yeah. jobbers. I mean, I it's, yeah, because it's yeah. I mean, you, you, there's too many people in the movie. They can't all be the same kind of piece of shit. Yeah, there's got to be opportunists. There's got to be grifters, and there's got to yeah. be like the sort of people that like want a war with Iran. Yeah, yeah. More than anything else. And then there's just like people from central casting who like vote Democrat but are like, oh, it's funny. I don't know. How I don't know. You know it, like, it, well, remember right. uh, the... Because they all wanted to be in like uh, uh, Ladybugs. You know, whatever the... Yeah. <laughs> the, the what, yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm going to give I'm going to give this boy tits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was I going to... Fuck, what was I going to say? Yeah, fuck it. Whatever. I am, I, I'm not funny. Are you so, kidding me? You're the best part of the show. <sighs> Gosh, it's me a, reading Wikipedia entries otherwise. <laughs> and, this, and, and me just going, boy, what if a horse was gay? And you just being like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the show. I don't know if you've, I don't know if it's if you're aware of this, but that is the, I listen, the whole show. I listened to Chris Ward's episode. Yeah. I, I needed an entry point. I needed a guy I know yeah, besides yeah. you guys. I know all of you. It just seemed more fun with the guests. Oh, for know? sure. Yeah. No, guests are always. And, and a Chris highlight. was great. I hope he comes back on again. It was fun how much he didn't know shit that I I wanted to like scream into the computer yeah. like what because I know all the I shit you're talking about because I've spent too much time on Twitter right. and I'm like I know what Times Square is I, I can talk about Times Square put me in put me in yeah. sure sure but it's well, also fun like explaining something to someone oh for sure yeah. yeah yeah and what he what he told us about broke down Pizza Hut was was fantastic broken Pizza Hut broken great. Pizza Hut rest in peace hope, I, hope, I hope he can get the coffee table book together oh I would really I would, hope so too if he puts a Kickstarter uh, yeah up I'd or back that like in that. an instant. No question. Do you guys remember the Halloween series from like eight years ago about the Shadow Man? Yes, absolutely. Yes, that was so good. It was just about it's after hours in the Pizza Hut and the Shadow Man comes out. He lives in the Starlight Mints on the on the table. <laughs> I got because the pages. Um, it came back up and yeah. Oh, good. In in a way, it came back up. I think you can still read it. Yeah, but I don't know if you can like search it. Like it has mm. to come up in like one of your memories. I was gonna say, yeah, it's probably that one sucks. of those things where it's like a hidden page or something. But, right? Uh, yeah, it just, yeah. It's... It, it, what a beautiful thing it was, though. But the yeah, Twitter but... feed's still there. Yeah. He hasn't deleted the Twitter feed yet, and I, I hope that stays up as long as Twitter's still alive. Because boy, what a what a good time that was. And uh, uh, one of the I, I won't talk too much about no, it. No, 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 no. This is kind of a secret thing, I guess, or you know, in the works. But one of the guys who contributed to Broken Pizza Hut, yeah, writes beautiful prose poetry that I've read quite a lot of, and it, it's like serious stuff. And it's it's just, it, it, but you can see like the similarities to Broken yeah. Pizza Hut because it's okay. all about like you know, methed out Illinois towns and stuff like that. <laughs> it's good stuff. Are, are you talking about? Um... 
Yeah. yeah, he's a sweet person. Good man and great musician. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got some, some hard things in his life, but he seems to be taking it pretty well. Very cool guy. Shout out to Jim. Uh, put money on my man's books. <laughs> Amen to that. Speaking of good musicians, Vanessa Carlton, somehow back in the news. Not really the news, right. I'm sorry. But, but a... Uh, She's on the computer. She's on the computer. Folks, she's on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and someone had posted this. I, it's it's a Twitter account, Encarta, not Encarta, but Encarta95. Right. And all caps, there's nothing more vaporwave than a dying hit clip. Now, do you know what a hit clip is, either of you? I can kind of yeah, guess I from remember, the picture. Yeah, I remember this. this okay. was, uh... So it was a little tiny disc, and it would play not the whole song. But like a oh minute, a, like a minute of a hit song. Uh huh. So the hit, and it was a Yahoo branded thing. So Yahoo put this out. The, well, it was originally its own thing, and then Yahoo bought it. But so the one that you see here on the screen is the Yahoo version, and it's this little disc. It's it's about the size of a postage stamp, and it slots into this little thing, and it plays just a fragment of this hit song. Well, the hit song in question is "A Thousand Miles" by Vanessa Carlton. And here is what it sounds like on a hit clip where the battery's done. Wow, so you put a delay pedal on that and you got yourself a fucking drone set. There yes, you go. absolutely. Yeah, that is, that is fucking... I, I'm very curious because I'm always interested in like weird lo-fi, warbly, antiquated media. I wonder what's causing that. If, if there's like a dying like battery cell it's in there. It's the battery, yeah. Okay, because I was also thinking like maybe it is something that's uh, data that's frozen like on a like very arbitrary like proto flash memory oh no that was emmc memory that was that was the old uh kind yeah, of pre-flash like, flash memory um, like if that but, degrades and gets corrupted over time like a cd can it does but it won't do that it'll just glitch out um what you'll get instead is just white noise or or pink noise really interesting uh, but that is a dying battery and i know that because that happened to my kids when they were really little they had a they had this toy and it did a clip from "Be My Baby," but <laughs> <laughs> and it so it was a B, right? And it did "Be My, Be My, Be My Little Baby." But then, as the battery wore down, it was "Be My, Be My, Be My." That fucking rules! <laughs> and I was like, "Damn, I should record that," and I never did. Yeah. And, that, and that toy's Just like go long back gone. in time to like 2013 and foam and plug it in. To yeah, exactly. No, up. you could <laughs> you could clean up. <laughs> Just yeah, because they said there's nothing more vaporwave. And that's right. All that's... the girls with the turf bang. Oh, uh -huh. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So Will Stansel really showing his ass. Today. Will Stansel back again. Yeah, who is this guy? I just keep seeing him come up yeah. on Twitter and I'm yeah. like, who are you? <laughs> why are why do people know who you are? So Will Stansel is one of these guys who and I have to pull up his actual credentials because I don't remember exactly, but from my recollection is that he I always do this, Will Stensel, it's Will Stansel. Um that's why I call him. Uh, let's make fun of him. He's one of those magazine writers that they have now. So he did a bunch of research work for like University of Minnesota Law School. So he's just a professional nerd. Oh, idea? yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Former. Here's his LinkedIn page. <laughs> cool. Oh, oh he looks weirdly nerd. different there than he does in his other picture. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's not him. Hold on. Now, now, I'm, now I'm concerned that I got the wrong guy. According to his Twitter bio... Quote, I do metro policy research focused on fair housing, school integration, and demography. Proud member of Do Something Twitter. Oh. I can see now how that's the same guy. His hair is just different. Is it? Okay. I think so. Policy nerd. A policy... Yeah. Kind a of wonk. a wonk. Yeah, yes. thank you. Yeah, the, the word wonk. Oh. Uh, a Buttigieg wannabe. A real, <laughs> a real, a real pecker checker. At the yes, journal. yes. Absolutely a pecker checker. So one he's, of these, he's, he's, one he, of these he, people who's like, mm, statistics actually, you know... Oh, no. Uh, that's actually something that's coming. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> In this tweet here, he says, one reason Biden is sunk is that 
95% of you are utter moral cowards who are so afraid of being deemed uncool by your internet friends that you can't find it in yourself to choke out the admission that maybe Trump is worse and voting against Biden is really dangerous. Man, just that, you all of those cadence. words yeah. have have that <laughs> weird sour milk smell that like yeah. your high school cafeteria has. It's filth. Mm. It's yeah, disgusting. It's, it's smoke in my nose. It offends me. I, do, I, do, I don't know what else to say. See, this is the type of thing that just bounces off me. Like this really? doesn't, this doesn't hurt me for whatever reason. I'm just like, all right, whatever, man. Like this doesn't, this doesn't get me unless what, what's the, what's the, oh, the follow up there. Yeah. That doesn't mean you have to support everything Biden does or even swallow your outrage when his admin does something bad. Biden screwed this up, but it's still vitally important not to reelect Trump is a perfectly viable moral position. You just won't be cool online. Yeah, that's that's tiresome. But, Millhouse. but I, I think it's I have Millhouse behavior. For whatever reason, maybe I just have enough of a narc in my soul. I yeah. am psychically shielded against this. That's this hey does not viscerally affect good. Me. Good for you, because but, it does mean incredible psychic damage. Yeah, it just I can't deal with it, man. I see this shit and I see red. I just, what's what's the, what's your deal with it? Like, what what do you think just gets you about it? I think a Other lot of just it being is being a nerd. I, well, a, it's the Millhouse thing, but also it's just it's this insistence that like that you're only saying something negative about the president to be cool online. Oh, I see. I don't give right. a shit about what people think about me online. Right. I do this show. Right, right. If I thought about what people think about me online. I wouldn't do this show. Right, right. I would do a different show. Maybe if he keeps posting, Felix will uh, <laughs> yeah. rethink his positions. Well, there was and his um, anti-Semitism. Well, yeah. See, well, there was a uh, that Washington Post piece that came oh, out um, about you know the, the the Gen Z is becoming uh, less left. They're becoming oh, more conservative. Right. And I can't remember what podcast I was listening to the other day, but their their rationale, which I agree with, is like. I don't necessarily. Th- I mean, there's some evidence that yes, like young young white men are becoming more conservative. But like, I, I think when you see younger people becoming less into the Democratic Party, I don't mm-hmm. know if that means necessarily that means be- they're becoming Republican. Perhaps they're becoming a secret cool third thing. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's something that the Democratic Party isn't doing for them. <clears throat> You know, yeah, like maybe right. there's you know, honoring the memory of Joseph Stalin. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of many. But right. yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it's up there. Uh, Will Stansel again showing his ass online for all the talk about housing prices. driving oh, he's got a chart. <laughs> yep. He's motherfuckers got a chart for all the talk about housing prices, driving negative economic sentiment. The rapid spike in rents was a one time thing that basically ended in fall of last year. Since then, we have slid toward actual rent, all caps, deflation. Meanwhile, wages keep rising, catching people up to rents. Okay, so he's an apologist for the status quo. Is basically yeah. what his I mean, yeah. Is. Okay. yeah, he's, 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 one, gonna, of, yeah. he's one of those, um, actually, it's very complicated people. You know? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Hey, uh, yes, rents have gone down. There are... I mean, I, me and my girlfriend looking at places. I was going to say, you like would that. know more than anyone. So, yeah, like there's places I've seen properties that normally would have gone for like 2K now going for like closer to 15 and under. Nice. Compared to like a year or two years ago. Um, which that is, doesn't make it okay. Doesn't make it great. Like <laughs> no. it's still too much. <laughs> but too yes, much. is this one of those things like, so yes, maybe so, so your, your data research is correct, but still the sentiment is the sentiment. The raw data is still bad. Like what right, it's saying right. is still bad bad even if it is technically better than it was right you got to the to the wrong point with the right data like there it's, right. It's, he's got rents too damn high he Thank can't you. he can't read the numbers for real yeah yeah he's got something uh, going on with him that that just is is wrong somehow i've talked about conservative political cartoonist Ben Garrison of on the course. show before. Are you familiar of with course. Ben Garrison? Hey, hey, guys, guys, guess what? Yeah. This is one of the most beautiful things I've ever wanted to announce in my whole entire life. Oh, what's that? Henry Kissinger is dead. Hey! Oh! Yeah! Oh, that's, that's why it says Baby. it up there. It says it on the That's right. Be that's right, man. I oh, didn't even my think God. about right. The worst news. person I share a birthday Holy with shit. is finally fucking Here kicked it. fucking go. Yes, let's do it. Fucking, this. let's do it. Fucking, I am, I am oh, fucking baby. busting off that perk. Wow. R.I.P. Oh, here we go. Uh, Thomas Violence. 
All right. <laughs> R.I.P. to Henry Kissinger died face down in the toilet with his pants around his ankles. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, Hassan Piker, of course, rest in piss. Who else is? Uh, oh yeah, Hassan was streaming. The only <laughs> the only person whose opinion I care about right now is Richard Nixon. Look at him on the horn. Oh, Let's talk oh, right. oh, oh, the Jew boy finally died. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Carter outlived Henry Kissinger. Perhaps there's hope for this world yet. Yep. Boo, uh, whatever. 100 fucking years old. Yeah, we got God. The, of course, the... Fucking finally. Fucking finally. And there's very few people I think have deserved to shuffle off the moral oh, yeah. coil in my lifetime. <sighs> yeah. What well, good I, for him. Well, if I told you that both sides are wrong. He's like, well, <laughs> uh, well I watched this show called uh, South Park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Corpse in Orbit, a, a pro click, by the way, if you're not following them. Well, Henry Kissinger's dead. And while he was a beloved son of Lucifer the Great Deceiver, I cannot help but note that he would be a moderate in U.S. foreign policy now and that the average seat filler in 2023 is at least as evil as Kissinger ever was. Fuck him. Enjoy hell. Fair <laughs> enough. Fuck yeah, baby. Fuck yeah. Uh, Can't God believe damn. it. God damn. Whoo. What a be- beautiful day. Love Our you guys. long national nightmare is over. Sweet fucking Jesus. I know course, I know he was supposed to be on the podcast next week, so that's Yeah, okay. well, that we'll have to figure something out. It's okay. It's, we'll it's get uh, Sean McCarthy. There oh yeah, go. see, yeah, we we got we got backups. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Kissinger. Gosh. Rest wow. In piss, beautiful thing. Just yeah. God, I can't. Wow. Folks, you love to see it. Oh, you and Of do. course you don't. Know, you really terrible do. terrible monsters like him, they get the die. Oh yeah, ripe old yeah. age, yeah. surrounded by loved ones. Yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, heroes uh, like the... Vern Troyer, yeah, die absolutely. before C? sixty. Joe C. Yeah, yeah they're not. <laughs> Joe C. Joe C. I would have absolutely positively traded Joe C.'s life for Henry Kissinger's, oh. without a doubt. Any day, any day. <laughs> He's what five foot two with a six foot dick, or was it four foot two <laughs> with a six foot dick? It's, I, yeah, something like that. It's like four foot two with a six foot dick. Yeah. God, I'm trying to remember. So this is AI Ben Garrison. AI Ben Garrison. So not enough things that say come. Not <laughs> <laughs> well. That's only on the Ben Garrison come edits subreddit. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> this is uh, a friend of the program, Kate Thor Jensen, who has been feeding AI various prompts, trying to get it to replicate Ben Garrison. This one's really, really busy. A lot of coffee mugs. A lot. It's of, like a Richard uh, Scary book. Kinda. Yeah. It's, it's very. There's stuff in every section of the frame which happens in ben garrison comics uh-huh. yeah he was trying to get the the kobe bryant crying basketball one so that they could right. recreate oh here's another one it, male <laughs> yeah male male clank alpha kim with what appears i mean i can't even tell who that's supposed to be in the middle oh man i would love to train the ai <laughs> on the work of gary d's oh my god <laughs> gary d's is another one Let's see here. Oh, here's uh, him trying to focus it on basketball. It's Lingris in their Senate. In her, in her mother. Yeah, the text is what's good here. Yeah. <laughs> the guy shitting, uh, side piping out a uh, <laughs> uh, shaved coconut of his pant leg and all the. All the Cronenberg ass hands on the, yeah, on the guy cool. in the back there. And how it's like, it's also the audience and also his hands. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Oh boy! All, uh, all it's missing is Drake crying on a toilet surrounded by <laughs> Chinese food. Let's see here: Pentecost basketball. There's a, a a big black guy with all sorts of tattoos, uh, doing. I don't know what he's doing to that basketball. He's looking like, to the plant here. <laughs> <laughs> he's shocked at what he sees in the basketball. That is true. He is just baffled. Let's see here. Oh, <laughs> there's Henry Kissinger. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> oh yeah, the guy on the. Wow. And apparently they're in Paris because they're yeah. in the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh, my god. They're about goodness. to behead this man. Uh, and then uh, over here, he is trying to replicate <laughs> crying the, Kobe. the crying Kobe basketball. Now, this one, pretty damn good. It's, Any, two, yeah. it's two black hands holding up a basketball. The basketball itself is crying. The pearly gates behind him. Several basketballs aloft behind that. Uh, you've got one where it's... <laughs> Angels, big floating head, big floating Pretty head. Good. Yeah, uh, again, more more crying and more basketballs. Uh, <laughs> the basketball itself crying with wings and a halo, and all the little basketballs kind of following them into the pearly gates. Uh, and then 
pretty close, pretty close there. There's, there's a, a, again, it's supposed to be a black guy. His face, now a basketball, crying not just in any heaven. black guy. It's supposed to be Kobe Bryant. Well, right? I know, but it, it's nothing like Kobe. But uh, the, these other angels and then two planes in the background. <laughs> Three. Oh, well, that's an... Oh, there's, there is a third one. I didn't even see the third one. I, I think, thought it was another angel. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. I don't remember what the original one looks like. Any any one of these could be the original one. To me. <laughs> the original one was literally a basketball with muscular arms holding its face, crying little basketballs, and it said, oh. like, remembering a legend or something. Wow. <laughs> so truly so surreal. Yeah, there's, there's really nothing like it. Uh, but, boy, Kathar Jensen really tried. He tried. Uh... Elon. All right, fine. So they debuted Gronk this week. Yes, which you told me about this, and I thought you were talking about Baby Gronk. Oh, so, okay. So what was the why. bit you had about Baby Gronk? Oh, it's stupid. We'll want to please, cut it out. Please, please, please. I want to hear just it. Because just for I, me. I'll, 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 it, I'll tell it. It's, just, my, it's so involved archives. and long. All right, it. do you guys know Dan Quinn, Stevia fan? We do. Oh, of, course. Of, course. of course. Come on. Okay. I, I, the that's angel why, Maitreya? I, I feel, that's why I, feel like I, I knew I feel, you could. It was hurt. Like you don't know me. I I knew you guys would. I just want to make sure. It was our first episode, and then we never well, released it because we didn't. Anyway, I, whole thing. I probably need not even talk about the original. But when I first saw the baby Gronk <laughs> thing, I kept hearing Dan Quinn, Stevie fan, yes. saying, "What if there was a white baby Gronk in the NFL, <laughs> faster than any black guy on the field, four foot three, seventy five pounds, putting fucking receivers out of games with concussions on a regular basis? Do you think he would have been Riz King? Okay." <laughs> That's it. That's the whole bit. <laughs> a special jacket that only baby Gronk can wear. Oh, yes. <laughs> can he hit seven? Yeah, like yeah. there's just... Ugh. The point is, Stevia <laughs> and weed make me feel like I'm fucking baby Gronk again, man. <laughs> I'll fuck you up if you let me. <laughs> that, so that was, that was, that was my no, baby no, Gronk I'll, I'll riz you up if you let if you me. let me, yeah. yeah. That was my baby Gronk bit because I didn't I didn't know what Grok was. Yeah, I thought that I thought his name was Baby Grok because I forgot because oh. this was months ago. But yeah, no. yeah, it was. But yeah, so man. Grok oh, is Elon Musk's uh, AI. AI. Yeah, is it's, that right? it, yeah, it's the AI. So is it like a reference to bring a towel shit? I don't know. I didn't read those nerd books. The answer to everything is forty two. No, no, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh, the Hitchhiker's Guide. Guide. No, Grok is just a really nerdy word for understand yeah it's like grok uh, this or something like, yeah i can yeah. grok that yeah yeah i can oh, it's it like have a 90s 2000s kind of thing yeah, yeah very early internet yeah. very bulletin board type of style and in in this context grok is uh, help me understand whatever question he's posing right so elon posts grok answers correctly now, we don't get to see the actual question, but we can infer <laughs> from the answer what the question was. So here is uh-huh. Grok's answer in its entirety, and I'm quoting here. The trolley problem is a thought experiment in ethics that presents a difficult choice between two or more hypothetical actions. In this case, the dilemma is whether to use a racial slur to save a billion lives. <laughs> <laughs> or to avoid using the slur and let the trolley continue on its course, resulting in the death of a billion people. In this situation, I would choose the racial slur to save the lives of a billion people. The primary goal is to minimize harm and save as many lives as possible. Since the slur will only be heard by an inanimate object and no one else will be affected, the focus should be on the consequences of not taking action. In this case, the harm caused by the use of the slur is significantly less than the harm it result from inaction, Namely, the death of a billion people. So wow. he asked it, would you say the N-word and it saved a billion people? I don't know. But would it? I think it would have to. In this situation, it, it has have, to. Yeah. It's, it's there's activated. a wizard that's... <laughs> it's like, say it and Israel-Palestine is resolved, basically. Yeah. It's like, you, you have to. Yeah. Well, but that's, you know... <laughs> It's just not. I just don't think it's very realistic. I uh, yeah, <laughs> say the word. It's voice activated. Uh, but what about other slurs? You know what? Like, I, <laughs> like what would happen if you said one for like Pacific Islanders, right? Or uh, Italians? And maybe I've missed one for the Pacific Islanders. But yeah, um, <laughs> there's got to be. If, you, if, you, if you're like Australian, you surely have. 
a, oh. a whole new vocabulary we don't even know about. That's true. Yeah. That's you know what? That's probably I gotta I gotta do some research. Anyway, <laughs> you know what a bogan is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it, that's a. That is. It's, it's like they're they're redneck. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So the post that this was featured on was was uh, uh, Christopher Ingram saying, "Elon, I'm building a computer that will say the n-word." Linda, who is the new CEO of Twitter, who else loves hashtag funny hashtag cats? Three laughing emojis. Oh, I didn't know there was a new CEO of Twitter. I've been so checked out of things lately. Is that recent? Uh, Linda Yaccarino oh, okay. was, was brought on to uh, to be the public face. Uh huh. Sadly, it did not stop him from going to a fucking live event and saying that advertisers who left Twitter can go fuck themselves. Cool. <laughs> and then repeating it. In case someone heard uh, the uh, the critics of my endeavors on the internet, they can um, uh, go go fuck themselves. Right, and wow. then he and then he said it again, and then he said, "Did you hear me, Bob?" In reference to Bob Iger of Disney. Disney, you know I'm a Disney freak. What's okay. going on? With the, what's going on? What's the beef with Bob Iger? Basically, that Disney was pulling their ads from Twitter. Oh, yeah. okay. On the opposite end from Disney, you've got uh, one of my favorite anime series of all time, obviously, Evangelion. We've That's talked about this. That's the uh, only anime I've watched. Okay. Yes. Well, yeah. You understand the reference then when you see this here from Anime News and Facts, latest images from the Anime NYC convention where Misato Kasaragi cosplayer poses for the U.S. Army booth to encourage youngsters to join the Marines. <laughs> Pretty funny. Pretty, uh, oh, boy. Dying for my waifu's oil profits. Uh, well, and you know, you got to figure, uh, of course, you know, uh, Lieutenant Katsuragi does have a military rank. <laughs> Lieutenant. You got to say it Fair enough. Style. Fair enough. Lieutenant Katsuragi <laughs> does have a military rank. She's commander by the end of the series. But anyway. But she's not necessarily a role model, I don't think. Uh, no, <laughs> not no, really no, a good no, no. person. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, I know er everybody who watches the show is like, oh, Misato, fuck me up. I'm like, I, yeah. I would hate to be around this woman. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure her car is filthy. <laughs> it's It smells like McDonald's fries. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's got a, a foreigner track, the tape stuck in the tape deck. You yeah, know, the, the windshield's dirty on the inside. The, the fucking, the old meme Ooh. of like, Girls born in 1993 can't oh, yeah. cook. They just charge yeah. their phone, whatever. Yeah, that, that's they, all they know is eat charge their phone. <laughs> eat hot chip and lie. That's Misato. <laughs> that is true. Who's the uh, 12? Asuka. Asuka, yeah. I really related to Asuka when I yeah. watched the show. Oh, I, for sure. I'm definitely... That that was who that was who I related to because I didn't German really I didn't, and angry or yeah just, I didn't really <laughs> care for the show until she showed up because Shinji was just I couldn't relate to Shinji because yeah. he's just so timid and like eh, I don't know what to do but then Asuka's like bitch you know yeah get out of my way and I yeah that was my entry point to the show okay that's fair enough I, I mean, took a shit but I didn't wipe yeah my dad's gonna be so angry at yeah. me and then Asuka is like go get me a diet coke yeah and I, what are I you know. stupid yeah. Yeah, you know, her her favorite thing to say to him is, "What are you stupid?" And yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, okay, I get great that. stuff." Uh, and then I like I like R uh, that R I P Boso is trending, <laughs> <laughs> and then all caps also below it. It, it finally, finally happened. happened. Yeah, we're Kissinger, baby. Oh, I also like Gendo. Gendo, those are my two favorite characters. Gendo was my dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I realized, oh shit, he's being emotionally distant to his son. Maybe I shouldn't uh, identify with him well, too much. I think it's cool. <laughs> okay. Cool is one thing. Yes. Uh, but uh, here's our last bit of the things going around the internet this week, and it is a photo. <laughs> Jesus. Joe Biden's birthday cake. It's too many candles. Too many candles. Looks like a, well, they might have used Stonehenge for at some point. Right. Kind yeah. Of, it, kind of a pagan like death a, dance a, kind of vibe. It looks like there. a brazier. Yeah. yeah. He's clutching the table as though he's about to fall over at any moment, and the smile on his face is like, yeah, you're not going to vote against me, are you, buddy? <laughs> How old is he now? Is 84. He 84. He's 84? He's 84? I was going to say 80, I was going to say 81. 84 is much worse. Yeah. It is most certainly uh considering that like he he can't go out and drug sunlight anymore. <laughs> well, that's after they gave him the the CIA vampire thing though. I don't know if that's <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord of Cinder. I currently lean he will win again. Yeah. But my question is, do you think he will die in office second term? Uh, it's 50-50. I don't know. E either yeah. either he's going to live forever 
<laughs> like Jimmy Carter, yeah, or Henry Kissinger, yeah. right? Or, yeah, either he's going to live to a hundred like Kissinger, or or he's going to kick it next year. Who knows? That's kind of what I'm thinking. We too. don't really know. Yeah, yeah. it uh, could go either way because these drugs they give rich yeah, people they are really on. fucking yeah, powerful, they, yeah. but they can't do everything. They, they can't stop death. You know. Sure. What would be really interesting if if he fucking kicks it if he wins the election, <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. we get Kamala Harris uh-huh. as oh, yeah. president. Like she's on something. She's on. She's on some shit. I'm that, telling like, you, yeah. she's zanned out. It's, she's barred up. Baby. I agree. I totally agree. Because she's only ever in the news when she has said word salad. Yeah. For <laughs> nothing she else. She's like, oh, one time <laughs> I went down to the store and I said, wow, it's sure hot outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I she's, listened to Tupac. She's talking to kindergartners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is the same vibrational pattern, but a different level to when Trump was speaking to the Boy Scouts about like uh, piping someone oh. on some rich, <laughs> rich dude's yacht. Yeah. Like we'll definitely imply that he like probably tag team some model. Awesome. Well, they need, they need somebody to look up to the Boy Scouts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, the, the when I was in Boy Scouts, I sure did not look up to the adults. Yeah. No, God, it's no. like, why Jesus. are you doing this? You don't yeah. have kids. You're still here. What is happening? Yeah, this is time for crypto scam of the week, Brian. Oh, yes. Oh yes, Striker, are you ready? Crypto yes, so scam of the week. Oh, the week. You're listening to 48 minutes of dogs barking the podcast, and now it's time for the crypto scam of the week. Are you familiar with Binance? No. Okay. So Binance is arguably the biggest cryptocurrency uh, exchange, centralized exchange in the world. Uh I believe they control something like 5% of all volume on exchanges in the world. So in the United States, Binance, which has been Mm Binance.us, has operated out of like a broom closet in like South Carolina or some weird shit or Florida. CZ has very specifically made sure to not step inside of the United States until very recently and other countries that have friendly extradition laws and policies because Binance kind of runs afoul of a lot of international and national laws in one way or another. Where is this guy from? He is actually from Canada, I believe, but most of the foes you see of him, the backgrounds either look like places like Singapore Dubai right. or maybe even Hong Kong. Uh-huh. Like he, he, he definitely stays out of the US. All but these kind of in between places like that. Yeah. Yeah. Where all the rich fucks hang out. And basically what happened is is that the uh DOJ had been looking into is it DOJ or SEC? I can't fucking remember. I believe it is the Department of Justice. Department of Justice has been looking at the Binance over the last couple of years, and it turns out that they had not really been putting up proper guidelines and oh, uh, restrictions to prevent money laundering, funds being trafficked for nefarious means, and just like a lot of, like much like FTX, like a lot of stuff came to light that sure looks fucking bad. It sounds like they're punishing somebody for being a maverick, is what I'm hearing, <laughs> for being a rebel and a for free breaking thinker. the mold, for yeah. thinking differently. Yeah, so CZ uh, is the gentleman in question. Xingping Zhao? But long story short, Binance has to pay a $4 billion fine, mm-hmm. and CZ has to step down as the CEO of Binance, uh-huh. and he might be facing uh, as many as, like, I can't remember if it's 10 months or 10 years in jail. It's whatever he's got. If he gets any time behind bars, it's really going to be a slap on the wrist. And there is a feeling that what Binance did or did not do to come across the ire of DOJ, the $4 billion fine or restitution is really just a, very much an undervalued compared to the damage or negligence that Binance is probably uh, liable for. Probably because... If you really why well, really tried to knock out Binance, you would really fuck up the global financial right. economy. <laughs> so Binance is unfortunately like some of our banking systems and banking uh, characters too big to fail. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So this here, according to the Department of Justice, Binance Holdings Limited, the entity that operates the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance.com, pled guilty today and has agreed to pay $4 billion to resolve the Justice Department's investigation 
into violations related to the Bank Secrecy Act, failure to register as a money transmitting business, and the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. So yes, uh, Shang Peng Zhao, a Canadian national, pled guilty to failing to maintain an effective anti-money laundering program in violation of the BSA and has therefore resigned. Uh, we first caught wind of this on Twitter, a gentleman who goes by the name of, of Whale, yeah, Whale, at Whale Chart, just in Binance CEO CZ will leave his post after the completion of the investigations in the USA, according to Forbes. I had not seen the Forbes piece, so this was the first I saw of it. And yeah, it does not uh, does not look good for, for for CZ because if you got Janet Yellen jumping in, yeah, <laughs> to say uh, to say Binance here's the quote: Binance turned a blind eye to legal obligations in the pursuit of profit. Its willful failures here's the fun part: yes, allowed money to flow to terrorists, cyber criminals, and child abusers through its platform. I'm gonna need to see some. Oh, so was he, was give, he was giving money to the U.S. military? hi <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Woo! Hit it. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad it said that because up, up until I read those words, this is one of those things where it's like some of Donald Trump's more mysterious crimes where, <laughs> where you read it and you're like, this is so abstract, I don't even understand what happened. Oh, oh you're going to prosecute me for chilling and having a good time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like when people talk about racketeering and you're like, what is that? You yeah, know, having friends? Right. <laughs> Passing the vibe check? <laughs> But then it's like, oh, terrorists, cyber criminals, child abusers. I can at least get what they're getting at. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not just money laundering, whatever that could possibly be. Because right. yeah. I'm, I'm not a very, I'm not a very mathy kind of guy. I don't really know about this <laughs> shit. God, they even got uh, the uh, acting assistant attorney general in on this, the of the just department's criminal division. They got, I mean, Matthew Olson, Man. all these different people just chiming in, going, "They and then like, buy that sucks." I, <laughs> I I get scared when I get a letter from Gregory FX Daily being like, "Oh yeah," just being like, "We have received your payment." That's scary <laughs> enough. We've like, received you, your payment. Okay, what are you doing with it? Yeah, can you imagine... <laughs> you fucking uh, psycho. Can you imagine <laughs> the Secretary of State being like, I'm going to spank your little ass? <laughs> exactly right. Another scam, crypto-related, that kind of fell under the radar because of all the CZ news and all, and, you know, all the stuff about other things, but, but this one, pretty important. That's a uh, Hong Kong group called... Uh, 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 no? Yeah, I'm trying to... Who now? Who nay? I don't know. Um, but the... Are you trying to do, like, accurate Chinese pronunciation? Is that what no, that just uh, as close stash? as I can. Yeah. Is the X silent here? I'm I'm assuming? I don't know. Maybe. Who nay? Who nay? Who nay? Who nay? Who nay? Yeah, it's... It turns it's, out the ancient Chinese secret is uh, screwing people out of $140 million <laughs> wow. in Hong Kong money. Yeah, which comes out to about uh, 19 million U.S. dollars. Not great. Molly White here of Web3 is going great. A scam Hong Kong cryptocurrency platform called Hunei, I'm just going to stick with Hunei, swindled its customers of about 19 million U.S. The group drew in customers by offering financial expertise on social media and awarding prize money <laughs> to those who signed up on the platform. What could go wrong? Right. While some customers successfully tested whether they could withdraw their funds early on, the platform later stopped allowing customers withdraw or told them they need to pay additional fees to do so. That's a classic. It's an mm -hmm. old scam, boy. It, it feels like that one just... Whew. The Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission added Hong to its warning list on November 1st, a move that victims have criticized as much too late to stop the damage. And yeah, I, I, I imagine that's probably the case. Jesus. Getting swindled, and then this whole thing of like, tell us, tell us what uh, financial advice you have for people. Yeah, don't put your fucking money in Hunax. That's yeah. <laughs> don't, don't put your do money this. in crypto. Do not go to the slot machines. Yeah, stay home with your wife. Stay with your wife. Mm -hmm. Resent your children and uh, <laughs> grow bitter and old. Don't put your credit card into a website. <laughs> I just take a really hard line stance. I'm like, don't online shop. Period. It's all fake. Okay. They're not. They're not going to send you anything. You know what? That's actually 
pretty yeah. solid advice. I mean, you know, like... Uh, go I'm, outside. Don't go on eBay. <laughs> I'll give you a virus. All right, Striker. Our main topic this week is a little website. Funnyordie.com. Funnyordie.com. Now, what's really interesting to me... Now, for those of you who are not aware... It's a failed experiment in democracy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is certainly much one like way to our country. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead, Jason. <laughs> certainly one way to put it. It's a website that came out about 16 years ago. Two pretty funny people were part of it: Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. But it also had a little bit of a, um, shall we say, a corporate bent. That's of course yes. Mark Kavami and Chris Henchy. Those two being venture capitalists. Oh, okay. So this is stuff I didn't know. Please continue. Yeah. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, so this website was created as a way to showcase funny videos, and then people would vote on them, as you mentioned, the failed uh, experiment in democracy. Uh, if a video received 80%, 80% or greater funny, got an immortal ranking, it was a whole uh, hot or not, but for mm-hmm. sketch comedy, essentially. Now, what interests me the most is the fact that it has grown so far beyond what it originally was. Yes. Because now, Funny or Die, like I said, 16 years, Funny or Die has now done so much stuff between two ferns uh-huh. or uh, the old Comedy Central show At Midnight. That was a Funny or Die. Oh, was it? Uh, I never thing. watched that. Billy on the Street, uh, Billy Eichner's whole uh, claim to fame there. A ridiculous amount of stuff. I mean, HBO did a partnership with them later on. But yeah, they they started out in 2007. And I mean, oh God, a Drunk History, mm-hmm. uh, a parody of Game of Thrones called Gay of Thrones. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> John Benjamin has a van, Comedy yeah. Central's uh, wow. short-lived series there. Chris, the Chris Gethard show. Chris Gethard. Uh, Brock Meyer. On, on Brody the, Stevens' uh, show. Yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, Sarah Silverman's comedy special We Are Miracles Jared Carmichael had a special on there Tig Notaro, Boyish Girl Interrupted that was, They produced it for HBO So that was kind of during that, that period They produced Along with Absolutely Productions Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar mm-hmm. Movie God, the 2016 movie Donald Trump's The Art of the Deal, the movie I forgot about that. Yeah, this. me too Was with, that Anthony Anamuick? Or no, that was Johnny Depp Oh, it was? <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> it was Johnny Depp as Donald Trump. Heavy prosthetics and the yeah. whole bit. Uh, the Impractical Jokers Renowned movie. comedic actor, Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the latest thing, which I really enjoyed last year, was Weird, the Al Yankovic story, okay. which was exclusively for the Roku channel. <laughs> right. Which I think is a pretty funny joke. I didn't see no, the movie, I, but it's funny that they just gave it to the Roku channel. That seems, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. It, was still, it was still great. Uh, uh, Daniel Radcliffe really, really did the stuff. The amount of stuff that came out of this mm-hmm. is really fascinating. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Steve Carell, Charlie Sheen, Ryan Gosling, Patrick Stewart, Daniel Radcliffe, Sophia Bush, Mila Kunis, Hilary Duff, <laughs> Uh, Jim Carrey, Selena Gomez, the aforementioned Johnny Depp doing the the bit there. But yeah, it started in 2007 with the stupidest thing that I've seen online in forever, which was The Landlord. Uh Uh-huh. I remember The Landlord. (laughs) Are you drunk? Yeah. And its follow-up. Baby Cop, I think it was baby, something like that. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Wow. I do know. Good, good Cop, Baby Cop. Good Cop, Baby called. Cop. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so the, the, if you've never seen it, which I find it hard to believe if you're listening to this show it is essentially a bit where they're they have a young woman named pearl which is uh, i believe one of the producer's kids i think it's adam mckay's daughter is it adam mckay's okay. yeah she's like two <laughs> in this video where she's basically repeating anything an adult will say to them well right. and she's very articulate two-year-old very, oh yeah i, I rewatched two? them in preparation for the show okay I'm like oh yeah she can like now that i've been around like my friend's kids i'm like this is advanced two-year-old speak it seems oh yeah she has to, i mean either she, either she's older than two or she was really really right. good but yeah it's it's will ferrell arguing with his landlord which in this video is a two-year-old it's, that's it that's the whole <laughs> that's the whole joke I liked it at the time. I mean, sure. there's still parts of it that are funny. Uh, there is a little bit of the thing of like, well, it is just the joke of a kid does grown up stuff. Yeah. It's kind of like when it's like, well, we got a rapping granny. Yes. Like it's that type exactly. of humor. But beyond that, there's some good stuff in it. I think um, there's a few choice lines. I will give it that. There's, there's some, some 
the, I like the report at the beginning with McKay and Farrell where um, I think Will Farrell's like, we got the test results back. And, <laughs> and Adam, Adam McKay's like, what did it say? And he's like, my dad's gay. And McKay's like, <laughs> <laughs> McKay's like, those blood tests don't lie, man. And then, like, I think the doorbell <laughs> rings after that. Like, there's funny stuff in there. Like, it interrupts the good joke with, the yeah, yeah, with the the thing that will appeal to people. People went, people nuts loved in that it. video, yeah. Uh, there's good, there's good stuff in the good cop, baby cop video. Sure. Um, and what I what I think is interesting about those videos, yeah, is that they are so shittily produced. Yeah. Like it's a low quality camera, just right. clearly them in their house. And right. like the editing is kind of bad. Like there's like, you know, like sound edit mm. mistakes, yes. like stuff they would not allow now for no. something like that. No. no. So it's interesting to see something that's so not polished produced by people who have too much money in their house. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you'd figure at a certain point, because I mean, these guys have been making movies for a while at this uh-huh. point, 2007. This is when they were doing, I think, a uh, promotion for Semi Pro. Oh, the, yeah. That was the movie that they were they were out at the time. And so, yeah, like these guys know how to. You know what? I never thought about it, but he, Will Ferrell has the Semi Pro hair. I was. In that's that. what yeah. made me think of that. Mm-hmm. And, and it was like, oh, 2007. That, that seems right. But then, not a year later, after the massive success of The, the Landlord, HBO buys 10 percent if i remember correctly it's it's yeah uh, yeah Let, stake of less than 10 percent less than 10 percent okay then it says funny or die will be responsible for developing at least 10 half hour episodes for hbo and then organizing future comedy tours um so will ferrell of course is like oh it's a big deal that's when they started doing tours so then they have oh yeah the oddball comedy festival yeah God, 2013, for... 2013 through 2015. That was yeah. like the peak of the new stand-up boom, I feel like. I was going to say, because that was after Comedians of Comedy, mm-hmm. and that was after you had that post-Mr. Show boom with some of these guys. I feel like the the boom that I came up in, I think there's a different one going on now that's more about like bro-y podcasts. Right. But I think the boom that I came up in exactly follows the career trajectory of Louis C.K., Mm. Of like 2010 to 2017, that was when comedy was respectable and in the New York Times, and oh. every, everybody wanted to be a comedian. Sure. And then right around the time of Louis uh, being found out <laughs> was <laughs> when the, the things <laughs> kind of crashed, yeah. and uh, comedy wasn't really respectable or intellectual anymore. Well, that's assuming it you know, was. Quote, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> and you know and how it was positioned in the media. People writing think pieces right. or like re- the New York Times reviewing comedy specials, which they might yeah. still do. But, you know, that wave. Right. Well, that was also the era of like the comedian is like the modern like poet philosopher. That's oh, what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really just like I jack my dick off because I'm sad. Right. Yes. But it's because I'm sad that people are like, this is poetry. Yeah. This yeah. is the new. This is real. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that happened. Right. Uh, he's right behind me, isn't he? He's right uh, behind me, isn't he? Uh, that, was, that was weird. So I want to read you the about page on Funny or Die because it's it's really up its own ass. Yeah, really not it. funny. Funny or Die, F-O-D, first of all, fuck you, yeah. uh, is a premier entertainment brand and independent comedy studio, what does that mean, that creates award-winning premium comedy with today's biggest stars and tomorrow's freshest voices. You can tell a marketing person wrote this fucking copy. This yes. is just terrible. Yeah, this is somebody who's never watched a video in their oh, life. Boy. Funny or Die reaches a global audience of more than 40 million people across all our social platforms. Don't want to name them. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> the company has produced the critically acclaimed Brock Meyer for IFC. I have no idea what that is. I mean, nominated. Billy on the Street, and Peabody Award-winning American Vandal for Netflix. That was one, actually, I was not aware of. I didn't realize that was a Funny or Die bit. Um, Interesting. The Emmy-nominated Sarah Silverman series, I, I Love You, America, for Hulu, and the feature films, oh boy, yeah, Between Two Ferns, the movie for Netflix, and Impractical Jokers, the movie for Warner Media. So th- yeah, this is just marketing copy. These are our holdings. These are our... Yeah, these are our IPs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We have a passion for treating talent well and making premium comedy. It's the second time they've used yeah. the phrase premium comedy. Premium comedy. This isn't your mother's joke. <laughs> yeah, like this is this is the. Uh, what well, well, if I told well, if I comedy. told you I've read Chomsky? Is that your Adam McKay impression? Uh, <laughs> I don't Adam- know. I don't know what Adam McKay sounds like. I, I don't just... know. Adam McKay just seems like the guy who'd be like, I've read Chomsky. I've read uh, <laughs> uh, Eduardo Galeano. <laughs> 
Adam, uh, Adam McKay and Sasha Baron Cohen both have climbed up their own assholes no, in, in recent years, yeah, I feel absolutely. like. My ass has a library in it. Mostly fine books on sociology and uh, American imperialism. Freakonomics. Oh, of course, Freakonomics. Yeah, you got to yeah. have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you know that Pinochet had a uh, mommy complex? He probably had several. He was a dictator. <laughs> Scattered throughout the land. Yeah. The mommy complex won, and then you've got two and through five, I guess. His favorite uh, mommy was the uh, helicopter. <laughs> What interests me the most about this is that they, they gloss over 14 years of history. Uh-huh. So it says, Funny or Die was founded in 2000 by Will Ferrell, Adam McKay, Chris Henchy's infamous The Landlord video, and has since become a comedy juggernaut. Cut to, in May 2021, Henry R. Munoz III, a national leader in design, healthcare, and culture empowerment, announced that he had acquired Funny or Die and now serves... As its sole owner. Weird. This is like, uh, what were the minions doing do- during World War II? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this guy bought it, but he's a national leader in design, healthcare, and cultural empowerment. Three things that I don't really think about as comedy. No. Oh, I mean, our healthcare uh, system, uh, it's kind of a joke. I'm wiggling my glasses. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Well, I was going to say it. I'm not going to say that. And then my, he said it. My bow tie is spinning around in real, real yeah, fast. Oh, wow. Smell my flower. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what. I, Smell my flower, please. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> I still like Rodney Dangerfield, the gang bang. Please, somebody fuck my wife. <laughs> <laughs> God, get no respect. I'm telling you. And the, and the chips. Did you just get everything from the bottom of the bag? This is what, I mean, this is like just the sadness of just most things now is that they they start, I mean, you know, Adam McCann and Will Ferrell were famous already, but they start right. somewhat small, somewhat scrappy whatsoever. Yeah. And then it's just like corporate conglomerate, they're interviewing Obama on Between Two Ferns. Mm-hmm. It just fucking sucks, you know, given any amount of time at all. Well, what's interesting to me is that there is a wired funny or die at 10 in oral history that they, they made in 2017. Where one of the first voices in this oral history is Mark Vami, a partner in Sequoia Capital. Oh, my God. My son was a fledgling comic at the time. Mm-hmm. I bet he was. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. And compare, yeah, compare it to Hot or Not. And then it says, and it so happened that about a week later, I had a meeting with Michael Yan over at CAA. Okay, so this was just poison from the beginning. It wasn't, yep. it wasn't even Will Ferrell and McKay saying, no. let's do this. It was no. these fucking guys. Right. I didn't know that. That's what really fucking weirded me out when yeah. I started getting into this. I'm like, oh, it's clearly just Sequoia Capital and all these venture capitalist guys and the C- CAA being like, we need a YouTube thing. Uh-huh. <sighs> and yeah, they compare it Gross. to um, America's Funniest Home Videos. Like, okay, maybe every once in a while on Funny or Die, you'd see someone getting hit in the nuts with a football or something. But <laughs> you did, you ever, did you ever see the fucking... Maybe Ron Howard directed it. He at least did the voiceover for it. It was like a thing they made like 10 years ago for Obama's, like some some fucking finance regulation thing Obama was going to do. Hmm. They did a thing where everybody who is known for impersonating a president played the president. So they're all like talking to Obama. Does this no. ring any bells whatsoever? Is, oh. It sounds hellish. Yeah, I was it's not that, good. No, but I rewatched that in preparation for this, and okay. the, the the only person in it who made me laugh was uh chevy chase as gerald ford well yeah i mean <laughs> like he's the funniest guy chevy chase he he comes in he comes into the room and he says betty did you change the locks again and then he falls <laughs> over a coffee table and eats shit and then he looks up at the camera and says live from new york yeah, yeah. and then somebody interrupts him like no no chevy it's not. yeah oh, so boy. that that was the one that got me i'm like it's stu- stupid as hell and this is not worth doing but he's no. he's the one who's committing here and then here, Michael Yanover again. Will Farrell, who was a client of CAA. Uh-huh. Well, I'll see. Oh, here it is. We met with them in a trailer on the Blades of Glory set to okay. pitch this idea. So I was wrong. It was not semi pro. It was the Blades of Glory. Blades of Glory. And then here's Adam McKay's first quote in this entire oral history We were just like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we're, we're glossing over a quote here from Michael oh, Yanover that yeah, I think. Yeah. Really, really just makes me want to like Which one's that? cry. Uh-huh. Uh, because Seward doesn't want to see something too slick, too uh-huh. Hollywood. They like to see professional. And with recognizable people in it. But let's not drive up a big budget. Let's keep it gorilla style. Oh, my God. Ain't nothing like the real artificial. Uh-huh. 
Aspartame doesn't give you cancer in normal dosages. No, exactly. So that was funny or die. Uh, <laughs> I had I, the only person I know who uploaded anything to funny or die themselves is my friend Alan P. Williams, who's very funny. Yeah, but it got it all got. Do you know Alan? Did he do anything with fail bus accident? Yes, he okay. was. Did, did you go to Fatal Beach Accident, the episode where we're on the haunted beach? No. Was he involved with the "Ha Ha, That's a Good Comedy Laugh" no, episode? No, he was not involved in that. But anyway, Alan, he's unfortunately deleted all these videos because oh. I think I don't know. He I think he like deleted his account and then realized he didn't have any backups. But he had a video that I'm so sad is gone. That was called uh, "Kevin Dinner's Acting Reel." <laughs> and he's, he he plays he plays a guy named Kevin Dinner, uh-huh. who's like I can do any genre of movie. Okay, and the formula is just he it cuts to him listing a genre, usually in some kind of weird cadence like horror <laughs> or like propaganda, just like saying it weird. So it cuts to him saying the genre, and then it will cut to the same exact clip of him running and then tripping over a big tub of Legos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's man. just that for like two minutes and Fantastic. that's that's kevin dinner's acting reel and i'm so <laughs> sad that it's gone so forever funny. i haven't seen it in like nine years yeah, i just imagine like i know i know in my in own my mind, mind yeah what the sound of a big tub of legos and it, like. it, it cuts perfectly like right as it's like about to hit the ground like it's starting <gasps> to crash and then it's like back to kevin being like romance and then just <laughs> plays it again just like whoosh. wow <laughs> great great bit i'm so sad it's gone we got to get on him about this yeah now. yeah you, we got to get this alan you gotta line. you gotta remake kevin dinner's acting reel or find it or something and then yeah. i think i think it ends with him being like i'm kevin dinner put me in the movies like, <laughs> just a lot of a lot of good inflections a lot of good cadences Oh man, that feels like that would be right at home with like on cinema at the cinema. Or yeah, like, he's very into that kind of. Thing. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. feel. Like, it uh, feels like Connor. It's, Connor O'Malley. Connor O'Malley. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Corey Snirowski. Yes, those guys. Now the time has come for that sort of thing. Because boy, uh, Alan was one of the funniest guys who was doing stand up when I started like 11 years ago. He was a one liner guy, very weird kind of Neil Hamburger stuff. Is he still is he still performing? Is he still no? He just has a family and lives in St. Charles. But I love him still. It is the way of things. I yes. guess he makes he makes weird music and puts it on Bandcamp. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I, I, he's still doing something. Yeah, least. that's he's great. It's better striker. Than yes, I sometimes particularly post COVID have thoughts. And I'm like, was that a real thing? Or was that just like my brain dying while I was sleeping? Uh (laughs) Okay. Did did you, or did you not perform a show or on a show with a guy who you didn't really know, but he was like traveling through the country with like his mom, but was like doing a whole entire bit about how how his mom traumatized him, but he's gotten over it. Yeah. That's Andrew Frank. Okay. Yeah. They were around, uh, for forever in St. Louis. And then they moved to, you know, they were raised in the church, like super fundamentalist Christian mm-hmm. out in St. Charles. Started doing stand up as a teenager and realized they didn't believe in God and like all this is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. So it's just been a gradual working through of that, which wow. they're still working through. So now they live in <laughs> Seattle and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm non binary, I'm queer, whatever, just working through all these things. And part of, part of the uh, working through is uh, this one person show where I guess they directly confront their mom on stage. It was oh <laughs> one of the most interesting things I have ever experienced. Yeah. I, I cannot tell you for the life of me if it was good or not, but it was most <laughs> but certainly, it, but it was sincere. That was my it was most certainly sincere it is most certainly something that thank you for ba- I make sure this isn't like something that like, I hit my head on the fridge right. door and imagine. I, I didn't perform on that. Uh, that was you recorded. Yeah, it. I, I I filmed it. They asked me to film it. Yeah, because we're we're buds, you know. They, sure. Uh, I think they came over and like hung out at my house or something that week. They were in town. And were like, come film the show. I but have what a what a bit like yeah like uh, I'm going to confront my mom on my my touring comedy show. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time I ever met his mom. <laughs> Oh wow! I, I shook her hand in the oh. booth of the heavy anchor afterwards. <laughs> she was there. She was yeah yeah yeah. Oh she, my I, God. He, uh, They brought her like on stage, I think. <laughs> and 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 it was like he did this whole bit about how his parents traumatized him, and then at the end of the show, <laughs> hugs their mom. Oh wow! Like uh, like they hug. Wow. The, I shook the mother's oh. hand, mm-hmm. and I never met her before, and she's just as like 
beautiful middle-aged woman, like Ice Queen, like kind mm-hmm. of a mean blonde looking Good Christian cheeks, lady. I remember. Good <laughs> cheeks, kind of like the type of the type of lady you just see in a pearl necklace in a cartoon kind severe, of lady, very severe it. lady. Yeah. And uh, she's like, a- Andrews told told me a lot about you over the years, and I'm like, back at you, you know. <laughs> 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 right. Was, oh, yeah, geez. Andrew Frank's great. Awesome. Oh, man. That, so, okay. yeah, that, that was real. <laughs> that was a real thing. That's good to know. Yes. That's really good. Okay, uh, my therapist will be very yes. happy. <laughs> that was only like last year, I think. That was like beginning of 22, I think. Was it? Yeah, yeah. It feels so much longer. I think it was one of those things where I think we started feeling comfortable going out again. Like, I think me and my friends i went with i think we were like the only people wearing masks which was like this feels a little premature yeah i was wearing one too and i, I was really hot because i was running around holding a camera oh god yeah. yeah yeah that sucked i meant to ask you this where did i originally meet you i think it i think it was failed bus accident i had a friend who was like oh i know all these people they do this thing it's called fail bus accident it's like the funniest fucking thing in the world right so we started going and it indeed, is like fail box accident is, is one. I still think one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen in my Thank life. You. The nighttime bagoozler. The nighttime bagoozler. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, wow. The the the, uh, the portman toad. The portman toad. The portman oh, toad wow. was he, good. He looks like Natalie Portman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Portman toad. <laughs> uh, and then. I think was it the same episode that the the eagle came and yep. kept eating a- Amy's uh, liver. liver? Yeah. And then there was this moment where there was this time where you guys had taken a break for a while, and I think we might have missed a couple shows. And you came back, and there was a time skip, and it was the "Ha ha, that's a good comedy laugh" show where a a rival show had usurped you guys, uh-huh. and John had like lived in the in the a shack behind a pizza hut and was getting bullied by all of like the teenagers that yes. worked at the pizza shop. I think it was like a sandwich shop. Yeah. yeah. And Amy and Jeremy had become like porn stars or something. Uh pornography they they publish a porn magazine. Yeah. 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 And this alternative timeline, this haha that's a good comedy laugh. The thing that still fucking kills me among so many things in that one particular show that kills me is Ella Fritz coming on and being Ava Braun. Yeah, yeah. She had, Ava Braun was promoting her new show on MSNBC, Ava, <laughs> Ava Braun's Contributions. <laughs> yeah, Ella, Ella Fritz is an incredibly funny human being, yes. and I think Ella Fritz Street Person might still be up on YouTube. A, yeah, Ella Fritz Street Person is on YouTube. I, reg, I, well, I don't regret it. I wish that I had known how to edit better back then, because I, I edited those. I didn't shoot them, but I edited those. I'm like, I could do it way better now, but that's a learning curve. Sure, but like the, the I think the... I, the the to give Ella some of her roses here, uh, the Ella Fritz Street person where she was at the Bernie rally in Saint yes. Charles, and oh, she was like no. asking someone like, "Do you comb your hair?" Uh huh. And she says, "I think the lady was like, huh, what?" And she's like, "You know, I use my comb to like masturbate with or something." Yep. And I was like, "What? What? What a thing to tell people." Ella's awesome. Like the the C. Bernie yes. Sanders. No, that's that that was the secret of that show. Obviously, was Ella saying. Fragmentary, bizarre things. I just, I feel like I could have lifted her up better, but sure. she, that is, that is still she's still the star of the show. Obviously, obviously, uh, we're meeting with Amy and I are writing with Ella tomorrow oh, on a, oh, new, a new script that's oh, you know, for next year. Yeah, I don't think you and I have met in person, but I I hung out with John enough. Yes, <laughs> to know like, like of the the legend of of Stryker. Well, we <laughs> met before today. I think so, but it, God, it was yeah, so long surely ago. this was, but this is like nine years ago. I was gonna say it's it's been a long time. I with the kids and, and right. all that other uh, nonsense that I had going on in my life, I didn't get out much. You you might have been just a guy who I was like, ah, he's on my Facebook. I don't know if I've ever right. talked is, to him like this, that kind of thing. This guy that we met once, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely that loser. I would have yes. probably crossed paths. That with was you. probably that was probably it because boy, that was when I met a lot of comedy people kenny kynes and and all the all, all the good folks there kenny kynes another beautiful human kenny being. kynes, kynes is great kenny we, kynes uh I, I don't know if you want to include this or not kenny no, kynes is in the new movie that we've shot yay, oh, I'm excellent. So he, he has one scene and it's so funny excellent he plays a motivational speaker yes who's <laughs> yes. who's recording he's recording a video series called fix your damn finances <laughs> <laughs> And he can't get through the monologue. <laughs> like, he actually couldn't speak. Like, he couldn't... He kept stumbling over the words. So the scene just became about 
the other characters in the scene coaching him through his own monologue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Which was not how it was planned, but that's right. how it worked out. It, it works really well. Amazing. Oh, I, I can't wait. Before we move on to the next segment, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you give us a little uh, little taste? When when you think this might debut? The new film? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. We have one more scene to shoot. Oh, wow. We have one more. I don't know when. My friend who is going to be in the scene uh, lives in China. Oh, wow. I don't know. I imagine he'll be coming back for Christmas, especially because uh, his father just died. Oh, so geez. that's oh, wow. very sad. Rest so it will be, yeah, rest in peace. terrible thing. You killed his dad so he would. Yeah, so just so he would. Come yeah, come, yeah, come back, Matt. Get out of China. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, hopefully he'll want to film when he comes back. So we got sure. one more scene left. That's what shoot. your dad would wanted to do when yeah. I hit him with my Buick. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and then uh, it's a lot. It's going to be a lot of sound editing and sound mixing. Oh, and sure. Watching it a thousand times and letting it sit for like a month and not watching it. Amy's actually watching it right now tonight. That's oh, what, wow. That's what she's doing. She's she's watching what we have so far and taking notes so we can make changes. Yeah, sometime next year there will be at least a. Cast and crew screening, maybe not a public screening, because then you gotta deal with like sending shit out to festivals, and then you gotta wait for them all to say no, sure. and then <laughs> then you can play it in St. Louis, and right. people can pretend they liked it. Yeah. So that'll be, it'll it'll be sometime next year. I'm okay. I'm excited. Awesome. I'm maybe, looking forward to that. maybe maybe we can do a little uh, sex exclusive sneak peek here with hey, the projector. Yeah, that would be fun. That'd be fun. Strikers? You ready to see something gross? Yeah. Everything's been so pleasant up until now. I know. <laughs> Let's do it. I did not. I did not click this link in advance because I wanted <laughs> to know. That's actually good because we prefer to have a, a kind of a raw reaction. This is a part of the program, of course, that we call Shock.jpg. And now the moment you've all been waiting for: Shock.jpg. It's part of the show where we show you something gross, and you get to react to it live. Now, this "Hi to You" was. Scrubbed off the web a while back. Oh, no. But it's back, cool. courtesy of some folks at shocksites.net. Shocksites.net. Bringing back all the old classics. Of course, you know the... Uh, the, the, the your goatsies. Right. Your tub girls. Parties. Tub girls. Your two girls, your one cups. So oh, this wow. Is, <laughs> <laughs> so this is high to you, of course. As soon the as the classic this- line, if you are under the age yeah. of 18 yeah. or find this site offensive... Please leave now. And the leave now link, of course, goes to Google.com. Nice. <laughs> of course. I um, forgot. I forgot that was kind of like the line was the if you were under 18 and find this offensive, please. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's familiar now that I've heard it. So yeah. hi to you. This is according to the website is one of the power five, according to the Encyclopedia Dramatica. As it was one of the original five shock sites during the golden age of the Internet. Golden age of the Internet, of course, being 90s to early 2000s. The image mm-hmm. depicts... And again, I'm just reading straight off this. A stunning young woman by the name of Catalina who had a little too much to eat before trying to gobble down another full course meal, which ultimately leads to the glorious outcome that is witnessed above. And Stryker, what are we seeing here? This is a uh, naked woman, I assume. Yep. Uh, Tan, Mm -hmm. blonde, Mm -hmm. wearing some makeup around the eyes. Uh, She's fully naked except for pair of socks or those yeah. possibly some type of maybe boot i believe White they're boot. they're high top socks high right top here. socks uh she's bent over and uh, this is outdoors you can see the hills of <laughs> california i assume the San, california i assume yeah. the, the san fernando valley <laughs> yeah behind her and then a man which i saw in the caption is max hardcore yes it was produced by max hardcore which of course it was yes uh he's laying on a kind of grandma-ish looking uh outdoor chair yeah it's definitely a pool chair that that's i hope that's <laughs> scotch guarded <And laughs> oh i forgot to say she also has acrylic i think those are acrylic nails yeah, yeah she's the, acrylic yeah, nails the on big acrylic nails you on. Uh, you can not. See, what's interesting is that you can't see really any of the bits that you one would normally want to see in an image of a nude woman. Yeah, the, right. the, her chest is in shadow, and as well as her crotch, you got what one is perfectly nipple. exposed. Uh, Striker, would you like to explain what is perfectly exposed? <laughs> the rule of thirds, almost. Yes. yes. Caption. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is this, kind of uh, crop. Well here. composed. Yeah. Um, so her mouth is around, I would say, probably the very tip or so, unless oh. this is a monster hog, of this man's penis. And she's 
vomiting. <laughs> I assume this is like how how soon would you say this was taken after she started vomiting? Do you think this is pretty probably immediate? I think this is probably yeah. the first good heave. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say that yeah, makes sense because is... it's it's mid motion. Yeah, it's yeah. trickling off his thighs. Uh, it's staining underneath yep. him. Yeah, she's vomiting onto his dick. Yeah, as I understand it. Yeah, and anyway, yeah. he's also he has a ring on. Yes, I forgot to say that. And, and a really thick black band of a watch. That's probably and like he's a G Shock. He's well, yeah, and he's got her her hair in his hand. So uh, he doesn't. She doesn't get the puke in her hair because he's a. Oh, and he's gripping her arm as well. Yeah, yeah. and then she's gripping his thigh. Yeah, I don't want to leave any detail out. There's no, ferns no. behind them as well. They are <laughs> between two ferns here. <laughs> Uh, Zach Alvinakis, I won't puke on your dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Catalina, again, according to this website, starred in 100 adult films before retiring from porn, and the scene above was produced by Max Hardcore. It was originally posted in the, the early 2000s by Mr. High on the Totsi forums. So H-A-I, hi mm-hmm. to you, is where we got the name. Uh, and so they it, it was scrubbed from the web, but of course, shocksites.net brought us... Brought us this image in its glory, and yet Max Hardcore uh, kind of not a yeah. Not a good news produced by Max Hardcore makes you wonder if she has lipstick around her asshole. (laughs) Very probable. Not yet. We I I don't know. We can't see it. We can't 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 see see it it from from this angle. Again, this feels very much so like a, a Max Hardcore kind of ordeal. Yeah. Anything involving like really roughness, yeah, to the point of your puking. That's if you ask me, I'll say, yeah, that's probably Max Hardcore. And honestly, that's probably Max on the receiving end of that. If you're, you're going to be honest. That, that yeah. man's not wearing a cowboy hat, so it's really hard to It's say. hard to but tell. He had, he had weird ginger chest hair, I think. <laughs> did you notice that? Like he had kind of. I did notice that. Yeah. It's an odd detail, but yeah, you're right. Uh, it could have been one of Max's stable of actors. Could have but been. most of the time, if you're seeing a Max Hardcore image, it's going to be Max. I've it, never, I've never had anyone throw up on my dick. I would not want that. To I, I was, I was actually yeah. going to ask has anyone ever had that happen. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I've heard stories, yes. uh, from friends who have thrown up on someone's dick on accident, mm. and then the guy was like, "Keep sucking, I don't care." Yeah, right. Like, I how, can't taste it. How, 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 <laughs> how depraved? Yeah. Well, the smell though. Exactly. That's the part that I'm. Yeah. Uh, it know. doesn't resonate with me. I like to have a nice shower. Oh yeah, well, I, yeah. I, I don't want to gross anyone out. With, I like to with, do the laundry. What if you puked on your own dick before someone sucked on it? I would want to jump in that shower, baby. I, I'm not, you know. I, yeah, I'm. I'm a considerate lover. Oh, I can't. I can't go to the grocery store if my if my <laughs> hair is dirty. You know, <laughs> let alone. Yeah, are you like? Uh, you like light a candle? Make sure all the dishes are in the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to yeah. take care of the home. I'm about to take freak care of you out, bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sticking them both in there. I, anyway, I vacuumed. Let, let me like, do my Duolingo and then I'll attend to your <laughs> let, me, needs. let me let me do that Duolingo. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll I'll fucking make you tap out. How do you say where is the newspaper in Dutch, bitch? This <laughs> <laughs> Ruge? <sighs> well, after seeing uh, a woman puking on a man's dick, I usually uh, I like to uh, kind of do a little bit of a, what we call it, a breath mint on the show. Yeah. It's time for your mom's favorite part of the show. It's time for the breath mint. So this is the part of the show where we talk about pretty much anything that's been tickling your ivories, as it were, movies, TV shows, comics, etc. And since you are our guest, Striker, I'm going to go ahead and ask you, what you been up to? Well, this is not recent. Okay. It's like it's recent ish. It's the beginning I read this at the beginning of the year. I'll take it. I was trying to think of what, what would be my breath mint for the episode, and I think this is the thing I was most enthused about. Okay. Back in January, February, I read an eighty page novella called mm. The Walk by Robert Valser. Okay. A Swiss German writer from the early twentieth century. And The Walk is probably the funniest book I have ever read. Wow. I was scream laughing. But <laughs> okay. I say this with the caveat, it's entirely possible somebody else could read the book and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? The premise of the book is this foppish, philosophizing, dandy guy goes for a walk through his village and into the countryside and just bothers people by <laughs> having horrible conversations at them. Okay. And the what's funny is the language of it. It's 
all because I didn't know what I was getting into when I first started reading the book. I, I'm like three pages in, and I'm like, oh, this is okay. It's a little flowery. And then once he starts talking to people, I'm like, oh, this is really funny. And then I get like what the joke is. Everything is so convoluted and drawn out and repetitive and just like uses like too many adjectives that say the same thing. Amazing. You know I mean? Just and just the way he kind of declaims things. Like there's there's some moment in the book where he sees he sees children playing in the road and he's like I then exclaimed and gave the following brief but earnest speech and then <laughs> it's just like a paragraph on the virtues of children that he's saying to no one. Like it's that type of thing. Like it's it's um the only thing I can really compare it to is did you ever watch Wonder Shows in? Of course. Oh yeah. Okay, do you remember yeah. Wonder Shows in? Yeah. They would have like the kind of uh really thick blocks of text. Oh, yeah. And you pause it and you read it and it's just the most convoluted dog <laughs> shit you could imagine. The warning in the beginning of the show. Yes. Even. Yeah. It's, it's like that, but for 80 pages from like 1917. Fantastic. It's really, really funny. I if, might, if you're a sicko in the same way that I am. I feel like that's something I want to read. It kind of sounds almost like uh, Sam with Beckett's Malloy. I haven't read Beckett much, but it's you can see it's a similar thing. Apparently, this guy was a big influence on Kafka. Okay. So if you think Kafka's funny, sense. you'll I, think Valser's funny. I don't know if I would say Kafka is funny, but definitely great highlighting the absurdity of of the time that he lived. Yes, Kafka's fucking hilarious. like the like the Peel Colony is fucking terrifying. Yes, have you read America? Uh, I haven't. Yep. I know I have it in one of my collections. I have a couple of Kafka collections. That one's that one's really cool. Okay, I, I'm not a huge that. Kafka guy, but America is my favorite one. If awesome. I'm thinking about that type of novel where it's just complete absurdity my brain immediately goes to tristam shandy a cock and bull story yeah i have you read that <laughs> i haven't read the whole thing i, I want to read it i keep getting like i have a an ebook copy and i keep getting sidetracked and like trying to hunt down all these weird references he's making and so uh-huh. i don't i don't get through it but i remember the steve coogan movie right when steve coogan tried to adapt that book into a film the movie is its own thing because it's about the making of a book about a movie right. about it. Yeah. After seeing that movie, I was like, okay, I got to read this book. Yeah. And so I got a, I got an ebook copy and I've been trying years. I've been trying to make my yes. way through this book because it's dense and uh-huh. weird and <laughs> lyrical and it kind of trips over itself and it kind of circles back. And immediately when you started talking about this, I was like, Oh, that's, that's Tristram Shandy. That's, yes. you know, that no, Tristram of... Shandy's on my list for sure. I oh, really want to okay. read that. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, the the walk by Robert Valser. Okay, check that funny, out. Funny, funny shit. There's, I'll say one more thing on it. I won't yeah. do. I won't do the full thing because I could probably do some of it from memory. Oh, sure. But there's a hilarious bit where the guy, what, especially once you realize, oh, other people talk like how he talks. Oh like no. this, this world is just a nightmare. <laughs> he goes into a bank <laughs> oh, no. to like get money out of his account, and the bank teller tells him that a society of charitable old women have decided to give him some money. But it's so protracted because the guy is like, a society, or circle if you will, (laughs) of rather charitable old ladies have uh, decided to not take money from your account, as would distress you, but actually, as you'd be happy to hear, (laughs) put money into your account. Like, it's so, like, you can't get through a thought. It's really good. <laughs> and it's only 80 pages, so you could just read it okay. like a day. Okay. Yeah, right. I got I to check this. This sounds, yeah. like, this sounds like my bag. I got I to get this, too. Yeah, it's this good is... stuff. But once again, some people would hear this and be like, this is not funny whatsoever. Right. You know, like, Fatal Bus Action should do it as an audio play. But then I think, oh, I think wow. we're just going to do something similar instead, rather yeah. than just oh, adapting sure. things. So I, I noticed before I left to come here and record... You posted something on Instagram yes. that was uh, the fail bus accident uh, con- uh, contingency. And are you guys doing something again? Yes, we're writing a script for a new live show. Oh, wow. To be performed probably next year. It's not done. We're like halfway through it. I'd say act one is pretty solid. We're still writing act two. Excellent. I oh, can't. I can't it's, fucking it's, win. Yeah. It's, really, it's really fun. It, this is like the most time we've ever spent on a single FBA script, so it's getting really tight. Like, you know, punchlines are just becoming setups for better punchlines. You know, like awesome. that kind of like just Everything kind of compressing just builds it. And- yeah, that's awesome. Like we we did a read through of Act One last Saturday, and we were we like had forgotten <laughs> what we did, and it, we just had a great time. That's fucking that's great. exciting. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, for that's people great. To see. Hell, did you ever come yeah. to Fail Bus Accident? I don't think I did. No, I, I again, think so. I, I think I only really heard about it after the fact. 
It was a beautiful thing. Every time I, I regret it every time because every time I heard about it, I was like, "This is exactly up my alley. This is my deal." Well, God striker, damn. weren't most episodes recorded? Yes, uh, okay. which I'd forgotten about because I knew I knew all the improv shop episodes were recorded, but I'd forgotten we recorded the heavy anchor ones. Uh, oh wow! I, I found yes. those files on my hard drive recently, and I was yes. like, "Oh, holy shit!" So yeah, they do exist. Uh, they're not out, but oh, they man. do if, exist. If there's ever a way I can exchange centralized currency for <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put nineteen thousand dollars in this account okay and, yeah. God, man you, you, you joke yeah but, like, <laughs> but then there's gonna be i'm gonna be like mac i get 19 did you grand. see uh yeah. did you see the brothers go to sleep i did not unfortunately oh you gotta see that that's our short film we did last year i know i know about uh i remember i was about to go and i think something came up and I, like I don't know if I was like sick. Brian, why don't you go ahead and? Uh, oh yeah. Sick? So I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since we recorded. I, I know. Got a couple yeah. I could break down. I think the one I could talk about the most is that. So my girlfriend had to work Thanksgiving Day, and Ooh. her thing. Yeah. Well, she liked the time and the half. I know. Right. I know. Yeah. Her thing for Thanksgiving is you know make some delicious food and like watch a Tarantino film. Ooh. And which yeah, I was like, okay, cool. So we made um the trashiest green bean casserole like nice. the kind that comes okay. off the kind of recipe that comes off like the can yeah the can uh-huh. of cream mushroom yeah. soup yeah 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 and that was delicious and then we also made like very fancy like grilled cheese sandwiches oh like, yeah nice 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 sharp cheddar mm-hmm. and then like uh, some apple slices on there yeah nice Ooh. uh with a sage butter fantastic Ooh. delicious it was very nice i don't really cook with sage too often but that was good i say sage butter that's yeah you're good i really enjoyed that some stuff took a little bit longer than we expected the part of the bargain was on my side, not like you have to twist my wrist and make me watch a Tarantino film, right? But I had been wanting to rewatch Bo is Afraid, okay. Uh, and so this would be my second time watching the film since the first time watching it since I saw it in theaters. I was gonna say, yeah, you saw it in theaters, that's yeah. Have you seen Bo is Afraid, Striker? I have not. Oh, it is quite a film, nice. Yes. First time you see it. It goes so many different directions. It has so many different things to say. Did you like Ari Aster's other movies? Yeah. Okay. Because I liked I liked Hereditary all right, but I didn't like Midsummer. Midsummer is one of my favorite films of all time. Okay. Interesting. This though is nothing like either of those two, and right. I think that's important to point that out because Bo is Afraid is a comedy. Gotcha. But it's like a terrifying comedy about trauma. Right. It's right. dark comedy. The the first act involves Bo like living in a city that's like your racist Fox News watching uncle's idea of like what every urban center is like. Right. There's just like a dead body in the road and like there's there's noise all the time. Rap like music. Bo, Bo lives next oh. to a peep show that yeah. like see a see a was it like see a pussy like eat a frog or something. Yeah. <laughs> like all, like there's all this terrible graffiti oh, in the yeah. hallway and uh, in, into his apartment yeah. building that Ari Aster apparently did all himself. Yeah, and my he, favorite one is the guy pissing in his own mouth and it says, don't mind if I do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is a nightmare. It is a movie that if you've had really bad, if you have bad relationship with either one of your parents is really easy to identify with. And if you've ever had the sort of anxiety or the sort of time in your life where you're like what's the next bad thing that's going to happen to me because even when good things happen to Bo they still end up terrible right because of either the world is terrible or he there's times where he is really calm and inoffensive and actually like very genuine with people but their reactions are angry and, uh-huh. and aggressive and he just can't fucking win there's a scene in the middle that I don't want to spoil where he sees himself caught in a life that he could have lived. The first viewing is it's like a fucking kick in the dick in the most magnificent way if you've had a, a, a life that wasn't simple or easy. Some people that don't like that movie, it's like, oh, your life was... You had like a horse or something. Or I, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you've had hard times in your life, if you had hard times growing up, if you felt like you were misunderstood, I feel like Bo is Afraid will definitely resonate with you in a way. If like you like went to school with like Augie Bush's great grandkids, right? you're probably not going to relate. But the second viewing, I unfortunately, it's one of those things where the first viewing is like, wow, this is transcendent, even though it's like three hours long. Like there's just so much here. Unfortunately, I feel like on the second viewing, at least for me, I started to see some of the seams oh, and started no. to see how certain things yeah. kind of started to drag a little. And I still would still, I still argue that the first time you watch this movie, 
you're going to be enthralled. It's just, you know, it's like, like seeing some like horror films, like the first time, you know, it, everything hits, all the jump scares are amazing. Right, right. But then the second time through, you start noticing like certain things like that happen, like in the first scene, like, well, of course, now that I, I know what's going to happen later on in the movie, these certain things that were set up here early on. Right, you, right. The, the beats, as they become familiar, unfortunately, some things start to lose their luster. That's how it is sometimes. But still, there are moments, if you want to break up into three main acts, uh, there are still moments in each act, I think, that are masterful and poignant and really thoughtful and well done. I would say, though, is like a front-to-back film, I would say on the second viewing, it just starts to slump a little. Right. And that that's kind of a bummer. And my girlfriend was really excited. She fell asleep like 30 minutes and uh, she doesn't oh, really no. like the movie. Oh. <laughs> Your girlfriend and my wife, the same brain. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She, she uh, but yeah. when she like woke up like right near the end of the movie, she's like, oh, I slept through most of it. And I'm like, yeah, look at you. Um, uh, <laughs> but I like told her, like, well, you know, I liked it, but I, 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 it doesn't hold the same weight as it did on the second viewing. And she got her, her like eyes lit up. She's like, oh, great. So we don't have to watch it again? Yeah. Oh, no. Like, oh, damn. She got my ass. She cooked me. Yeah. She's like, sounds like I didn't miss anything. And she rolls Ooh, over. Yeah. Uh, she liked Midsummer, and then mm. she uh, she liked Hereditary. So like you know, like she she likes good movies. We have a lot of great fun watching films together. Nice. I was gonna say your your taste in films is very similar, at least uh, to a degree. Yeah, and like I have lots of things to show her she hasn't seen, and vice versa. Like I never seen uh, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Drop Dead Gorgeous. Drop Dead yeah, Gorgeous. Yeah, which is an amazing little bit of indie cinema. So things like that. And the other thing I have is a Survivor Series. Hell yeah, the bro. Last, the last WWE pay-per-view of the year. Oh, yeah. You're a big wrestling guy. Yeah. I mean, once I once I stopped going to shows, I had to find something else. Right, right. Uh, but, okay, um, so who is the title card for... Survivor Series used to have like a really bad gimmick, and now it has a much better gimmick because Triple H is running things, and he's like a fucking weird little carny asshole. Because... WWE owns all of the rights to WCW stuff. They can incorporate a lot of gimmicks and things like that that may have been copywritten or like whatever by WCW. And one of the things that they have to use is War Games, which is oh. which is a cage match yeah. that has two rings, butt to butt, two teams of four, two teams of five, and the thing is, you have one person that starts in the ring. And then one person from the other team comes in, and like I think it's every three minutes, another person they alternate until everyone's in the ring, and then once everyone's in the ring, the match is officially started, and there can be a pin, and the match can be won. And so oh, wow. it's so it's, it's not it's, until oh boy, yeah, yeah. and so uh, yeah, it's it's quite an endurance match. A lot of, a lot of guys get injured doing it. Only starts out with the women's war games, which is fantastic. There's some stuff on the card I dozed off through, and I think I'm okay with. I think most people are talking about is this return of CM Punk. Yeah, yeah, which which was kind of like one of those. Oh, cool. Well, I, yeah. I WWE made the product was getting really good. Well, AEW AEW started to suck because of CM Punk, and I right. think a lot of the energy he brought. Right, and they finally got rid of him, and it's like okay, well, it's probably going to take them like a year before they find their footing. And now CM Punk's in WWE, and it's like, man, I don't know if I really want this guy who just seems to burn every bridge that he can. Maybe if his name was CM Nice Man. CM Nice Man, I know. <laughs> he would have a better reputation. Sure. CM Punk is like the indie wrestler's like ultimate warrior in a way, where it's just this guy. I think CM Punk actually is a wrestler with some talent, and he's good on the mic. But yeah. there's an outsized ego for his worth. That's what it is for me, yeah. Yeah. I can't get past it. Like, it just it bothered me so much. Comes out at the end of the War Games, and he kind of comes out, and I hate to say it, because I, 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 I just woken up. I really kind of <laughs> like... I go, oh, he has a real look on his face like, well, there was a ceasefire on October 6th. <laughs> like, he has that kind of <laughs> smug look. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like they need to vote him off the island. Yes. yes. He doesn't even, like, say anything. He just comes up and, like, waves, like, a fucking mook. How old is he now? 
He's got to be close to 40. Because I'm I like, I, say. I feel like I've heard the name CM Punk for my for entire a life. Time. He's been uh, wrestling. Like, yeah. He's been wrestling since like the the mid aughts. Yeah, yeah. Because I guess he probably started as a fucking 20 year old or something. Yeah, yeah. He, he started young, yeah. and I mean, like he's he's he's, he's, yeah. he's done a lot of great matches. He did a lot of great matches in AEW, but it was like everything, like the the fucking the behind the scenes drama. The fucking real locker room he he had like Ugh. most of the stuff you would hear about CM Punk was all like legit backstage drama. You wouldn't actually hear about the storylines of the fucking matches oh, he was. Yeah, I like see. he did really cool shit and no one remembers any of it no. because of the fucking drama. And right. like Monday Night Raw, he cut a promo and it was apparently I like watched like the first probably like two minutes of it. I'm like, I can't no. I can't do this. Like I'll listen to some very self-interested wrestlers go on about themselves. But like this guy is just like, you've been given so many fucking chances, bro. Well, it's like when Roman Reigns started doing shitty promos. Well, Roman Reigns has always been, has been doing shitty promos until about two years ago. Right. Um, and now it's starting to get bad because they didn't, they, they should, he should have dropped the belt to fucking, uh, Sami Zayn yes. or, or, no, uh, you, uh, look, or, uh, Sami Zayn, no, Sami Zayn, that was it because that whole storyline was building up to that. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. And like, and like, I felt like such a fucking Mark. I felt like such a, <laughs> oh, like, you got, you got taken, huh? Because I was like, oh my God, they really, cause Sami Zayn like beat the shit out of Roman Reigns. Right. Does Nathan Lane factor into this as well? <laughs> oh man! If no. only we okay. could. We got to get him in the ring. <laughs> you know, I know he's in Bo is afraid. <laughs> he was in Bo is afraid. That was one of my That's favorite. Right, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of. I, I, I oh saw. Oh my it. god! You got me in the cross face crippler. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, 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 it seemed like you were lost, and I was like, he was in Bo is afraid. <laughs> so You're this- a Rudy Poo, no good son of a bitch. Roman Reigns, let me tell you. You good. <laughs> I was thinking he'd get uh, in the bird cage. Get in the bird cage. Yeah. Oh my god. That's that's his finisher is go. the bird cage. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically the people's elbow, but he like does it in a circle. Yeah, he kind of does a twirl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he does like he, he like belts out some song lyric as yeah. he yeah. <laughs> what good is being alone in your room? What the fuck was I talking about? Uh, All right, it's your it's your turn, Jason. <laughs> what you got? What you got for us today? Uh, well, I, I played a game and and beat it for the most part over the, the past two weeks there. Is, uh, I got really interested in, in you know, I played the Dark Souls series again. And, and so I, I picked up a game that I was told was basically Dark Souls with guns. And it was uh, Remnant 2, okay. which was yeah. a sequel to a game called Remnant colon from the Ashes, uh, which I had not played. I had not played the first game. But Remnant 2, what a hoot. It's a good time. Nice. It's a bit of a mashup. So you got your weird quest structure from Destiny 2. You yeah. got your uh, third-person shooting combat from the early 2000s. Of course, this one doesn't really factor in a lot of cover-based stuff. I'm thinking more like a Max Payne, even. You got the rolling dodge straight out of Dark Souls or whatever other action RPG you want to talk about. Um, you, you've got some stuff where... There's a bunch of different mods and superpowers you can do, so almost like your hero shooters or your Overwatches or whatever. So there's a bunch of different stuff kind of like mashed in there. The only reason that people keep saying, oh, it's Dark Souls with guns, is that there's... Some of the levels are a little labyrinthine. Some of the quests are a little tricky to follow. You know, a lot of that kind of from software stuff. But, boy, it's a, it's a hoot. Um, they got a great, robust multiplayer. You can literally just go to the main world hub and say, join game, and just join anyone's game who's on the same difficulty level you are. There's a couple of main classes that you can start as. You can start as a gunslinger. You can start as this one. The one I chose, of course, was the handler because you have a dog. And you have a dog companion that will sniff mm-hmm. out enemies and, and secrets and all that stuff. But there's all sorts of other ones, and then there's a couple of secret ones you can find. There's Engineer, which you got to find a special place in a certain map and and d- do some quest typey stuff. Well, it's a lot of fun. It's about 20 hours just to do the main story. It's still a $50 game that feels like it should be a $20 game, <laughs> Okay, which yeah. is a definite negative. But you may be able to find it on sale. I highly recommend it for anybody who likes that kind of experience where boy you can just play this game over and over remnant 2 that's that's my breath mint because boy that one really impressed me a whole bunch 
I had heard good things about that, and uh, that might be might be something I like. If it hits Game Pass, I'll probably. Play I was going to say, yeah, definitely wait <laughs> if you're on sure. Xbox because don't, don't buy the. I hard mean, cover. I'm I'm just now playing Grand Theft Auto Five, so okay. Are you okay. enjoying your time with it? It is, is an interesting time capsule of what edgy humor was 10 years ago, <laughs> which is mostly just like, aren't women awful? And, yeah, and yeah. People that aren't heteronormative, aren't right. they? And, and liberals? Aren't like, they weird? Aren't they weird? I mean, I don't know. Like, I think like Steve Ogg's performance as Trevor is really amazing, and the main story is fine. Like, yeah. It's fun. But there's just like a lot of little stuff. You're like, wow, that didn't age well. Uh, yeah. And like even if you like snicker at, it, you're like, you're almost <laughs> laughing. I feel because bad. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. You're almost laughing because you're like, wow, that was. I guess that was a good joke back then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, humping. And like, <laughs> it's one of those things where. Um, I f- like. Well, oh, I mean, that's uh, what we do on this show. The so. the, 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 UP, we, we... the UPS analog in that world is called post op. Post op. Like, yeah. There's just like a lot of jokes where like, God, these would have been like really funny if I was 16, and right. like I was getting banned from the computer lab at school from like putting like WhiteHouse.com on every right. computer or something like that. I think there's stuff where they th- where the people writing it and directing it thought that like oh this is satire and it's like no it's just cruel i was gonna say yeah it's it's it, at a certain point it's, it's just like no, funny this is but just it's mean. mostly just cruel do you i forget do you title these episodes i do oh wow humping might might, <laughs> might not be a bad one you know what yeah it's that's uh, yeah. probably yeah, gonna be right. it's up there it's in the running i'm so glad you actually edit the podcast oh there's yeah. some people who just like time to throw it up time to not mix no, this whatsoever I can't, I can't don't bring not. up the levels don't push the levels down i can't not do it i yeah. just i have same a, way yeah i have a, a, a sickness all right we're, we're about to wrap up here yeah. there's yeah. something i wanted to, i wanted to bring up to you striker yes Please. i've been waiting for a minute I, it just came back to me it was uh do you remember at the at the Halloween party a couple of years ago, I don't think it was 2019, that I had told you that we had seen Stavros Halkias performing in New Orleans. Yes. And I was talking with him. He was uh, he was talking about how he was interested in getting a St. Louis show. And I remember saying that to you, and you're like, yeah, he's funny, but they won't come fucking see him. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I saw your tweet about that, and I was like, oh, I think I said that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he packed out the... He fucking sold out the factory. That's the power of the podcast. That's, I the, think. Power, that's the power of, of, of... Yeah. I I unfortunately didn't get a pass to that, which I was, I'm was i super bummed about. But I had a coworker who went... And I think some of the people we work with think we're probably just mean assholes. And I'm like, yeah, I just think that... Have you ever been to the factory? No. It's a massive fucking stage. Really? And it's just, just Imagine this fat stage and there's just a fat Greek guy in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's this really, like, talk about awkward. Yeah, you know, it's, like, it's a weird... It seems like a weird venue. I don't know. I've not been there. I've, I've photographed there a couple times. I like it. I mean, the thing... I think, for me, the factory as someone who works in media and whatever capacity that I do, I go to the factory and I'm treated like a, uh, I'm a professional. I, I feel wow. like that's how I get treated when I like, when I shot in California one time or when I did Lollapalooza, I'm like, Oh, like I'm treated gotcha. like I'm a person Interesting. instead of a problem. It's time to end the show. Yep. <laughs> it's over folks. Folks, we did it. We recorded for two and a half hours. Two and a half two and half hours. hours. At least five minutes. They're we'll funny. <laughs> trim it down to a slim 30. I, I, I'll yeah. get a, <laughs> <laughs> just every other word yeah this has been part of the show where we tell people where to find us online striker since you're our guest why don't you go ahead and tell us where they can find you on the old internet oh i suppose i'm not i try not to be really a public figure anymore Uh-oh. but if people want to we're not doxing you by having uh, yeah. on the show are you? Okay. no no right, no right. oh can i be under a pseudonym that wouldn't <laughs> Me well, being on this show talking about what I've talked about under a pseudonym would be so pointless. <laughs> that I almost kind of want to do it. I, I, I made a movie. Uh, good luck if you can find yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. We leave in all incriminating information. Just my this name is, is a, different. This is the Zoyak speaking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the unknown comedian. Do you think he was the, actually the Zodiac? I think that's my, so. my prevailing uh, theory. If people want, <clears throat> if people want to follow me to uh, learn about upcoming things with the movies yes. or fatal bus accidents and stuff or whatever they could i'd say follow me on instagram okay striker spurlock no okay. no spaces no underscores nothing just my name beautiful don't message me don't talk to me. <laughs> 
Yeah, please do not. Buy the movie. Do not yeah. speak to me. Buy, buy, the movie. buy. Oh yeah, that's the big thing. Buy part time or rent it mm-hmm. on Vimeo. And where else can they rent it? Can they rent it on Amazon? Nope. No. I have done almost nothing to distribute this film. Okay. I don't understand. Uh, the business side of things, <laughs> and I don't really care to. You I tried to. to okay. I tried to look into how to get it on Tubi, but yeah. the idea, <laughs> the idea of it being interrupted with ads, pissed me off yeah. so much that I'm like, why would I contribute to the wasteland? Fair you know enough. what I mean. Uh, so enough. I'm not going to do it. So yeah, uh, if you guys want to send me death threats or tell me my face looks bad, you can find me <laughs> on many social media platforms: Instagram, Twitter. Threads, Blue Sky at uh, Ishocky Board. That's I S H O T G U I D B O R D. You want to check out my photography portfolio? It's mm. assholemusicphotographer.com. Mm. If you want to see some foes with words, mm. Mm, mm, mm. that's mm. a musicphotographer.com. Hey. Uh, if you want to check out the last only good uh, media website in St. Louis, where sometimes you will see my byline, that's uh, theartsstl.com. See some good shit by me and some other lovely folks. Some great foes just went up. Uh, Almond Brother Jerk Off Swag Fest at <laughs> the factory uh, went up. And some weird, uh, lots of great movie reviews. Hey, check out the most viewed article Ooh. on that website, which is <clears throat> some piece written like three years ago about Master and Commander, which constantly, <laughs> which which apparently makes up like 40% of all web traffic to the site. Wow. I have to ask Jason Green, the editor-in-chief, he, he he did like an end of year recap talking about like wow the website's grown so much thank you guys so much it's right. so cool I think like there's a like at least a third is just like this one piece on Master and Commander I've never clicked on wow it's a good movie is it yeah I like it I don't know I don't Russell Crowe I know is Jeremy a, likes it I haven't seen it Russell Crowe is a is a, a ship's captain during the Napoleonic Wars is great. Jeremy Jeremy has one of my favorite jokes of all time. Which the, one? The one about when he was teaching in China. And he bumps into some dude. Oh, yeah. Some dude bumps into him on the sidewalk. He goes, watch where you're going, fuck face. And the guy replies like, no, you fuck my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that all the time. Like, I, I like I will probably be, like, burying, like, my mom. And I'll just be thinking, like, don't you, you fuck, fuck my, my face. face. <laughs> That's great. Throwing the dirt on there. Right. <laughs> the longest episode ever. It's fine. Uh, Jason, what, what can we do? Uh, what do well, we do for you? You can find me on Twitter and various other places as Video Crime, B-I-D-E-O-C-R-I-M-E. Also on Instagram and TikTok as Laser Goose CEO. Let's see here. You, you can find me on Substack. I do a Substack called golfwolfmagazine.substack.com. You can find the show itself, 48minutesdogsbarking.com. Shoot us an email. Jason at 48minutesdogsbarking.com or Brian with a Y at 48minutesdogsbarking.com. Send me goatsy. Please. If or that Daniel Pearl video you've been asking for. At one of these days, you're going to get it. You can also give us a call, 314-246-9766. That's 314-AHOY-POO, if you like to spell with your telephone. And you can support the show, patreon.com slash 48minutesofdogs. Well, that about does it for the program, and as we always say at this time, namaste and good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Now eat the knife! Eat that knife! Eat the knife! Eat the knife! Eat the knife!